This afternoon, the final regular season game for the 1974 campaign, USC and Notre Dame in a renewal of one of college football's most storied rivalries. Since 1926, with the exception of three war years in the 40s, the Trojans and the Irish have met, and as it is with most of the Notre Dame opponents, the Irish have an edge, 26 victories, 15 losses, four ties. But the Trojans, under present head coach and athletic director John McKay, have more than held their own against the Irish. McKay is 6-6-2 with Notre Dame. He's four wins, a loss, and two ties in games since 1966, which, incidentally, was the year that Notre Dame beat the Trojans 51-0, and the last time Notre Dame has won a game here at the Coliseum. 90,000 expected for this. I know there are people sitting in most every location here at the Coliseum. There are a lot of empty seats around this huge football stadium. The temperature not quite up to 70 here prior to kickoff. And it is an overcast day, though rain was not at all mentioned in the forecast coming up to this game. It is a very overcast day. I doubt, though, if there'll be any showers. This is not really the last game of the year for these two clubs. Notre Dame is going to the Orange Bowl against Alabama. The Trojans to the Rose Bowl against Ohio State in the roar below. But for the fighting Irish of Notre Dame as they come on the field, and a huge, huge gathering of Notre Dame supporters on hand for this game. A reminder, this broadcast produced by the Bob Speck Sports Company, who selects and employs the announcers. Bud Tucker will be along with some pregame notes, and then the kickoff of today's game after this. Bud Tucker with Tom Kelly at the rapidly filling up Coliseum in Los Angeles. Well, you tell me how this game could end in a more, how this season could end in a more appropriate manner than the Trojans of USC and the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame before 90,000 people. So much is significant here today. Both teams cling to some hope of a national championship. And in past years, when either school has achieved that goal, a win over the big rival was necessary. Anthony Davis, the Trojans' great tailback, plays his final regular game for USC, and there is considerable hope that a big day could boost AD's chances at the Heisman Trophy. And, of course, the prestige that always goes with victory in this wonderful and traditional intersection uh, sectional rivalry, which dates back to 1926 and the teams of Newt Lockney and Howard Jones. Notre Dame, rated number one in the nation as a defensive unit, goes against the Trojan offense that has moved for more than 3,000 yards. Quarterback Pat Hayden, with a gimpy knee, will play. But do not put the Irish down as strictly a defensive team. Quarterback Tom Clements does it all on offense, along with fullback Wayne Bullock and halfbacks Al Samuel and Art Best. They'll run from the T formation, show you a lot of double wing, reverses, and traps. The coaches, John McKay of USC and Eric Parsegian of Notre Dame, say they expect a close game. Everyone expects a whale of a game. So hang on, it'll be coming your way in just a few moments, Tom. I noticed down in the field, bud, that um, they have uh, two same lineups for us in Notre Dame. Uh, down there they have what appears to be uh, mostly all seniors for the two schools. As I look at the Trojans down there standing next to John McKay, why, we've got, of course, Anthony Davis and Pat Hayden and Alan Carter and Rob Adolph and then John McKay and Cantwell. And um, Mike Smith is down there and I'm blocked out as Gray and then Phillips. And uh, Margarian and uh, Otha Bradley. Is that correct, uh, Dr. Francis? Yes. And uh, the Irish standing alongside of them and now being introduced to the national TV audience. Woody Hayes is working with Keith Jackson on this game today. And Woody Hayes, who, of course, is the Ohio State coach, is coming in at halftime. And that should be an interesting visit from um, one of the most uh, controversial of uh, the nation's coaches and certainly one of the best. The Notre Dame Ball Club really appears to be fired up. Uh, there's a lot of jumping up and down, arm waving, uh, clenched fists, uh, arms in the air, enthusiasm down there from the Fighting Irish. And we're going to have to wait for a moment to find out um, about the flip of the coin and who's going to get first crack at the football. Trojans will send out no less than five co one, two, three, four, five, six co-captains. Anthony Davis, Richard Wood, Charlie Phillips, Dale Mitchell, John McKay, and Pat Hayden. They're all going to be out there as co-captains. And as I think about it, I don't see either Mitchell or Dale or um, uh, Richard Wood down there in that lineup of seniors. Notre Dame's co-captains will be Tom Clements, the quarterback, and Collins, the um, linebacker. Man from offense and a man from the defense for the Irish. And now the Trojans are being introduced. 
gives me a moment to remind you that Bob Boyd's Trojan basketball team opened the season in fine fashion last night, scoring a very impressive 100-87 to victory over a surprisingly good LSU basketball team, and it was a real fine basketball show. Bob Trowbridge had 29, and John Lambert had 26, and the Trojans looked very good. And now they've got two games coming up this weekend, one against Oklahoma State on Friday night at the arena, and the other against Utah Saturday night. And you might want to remind yourself to call the USC ticket office and get some tickets for the Trojan basketball season. It's really an exciting, good show. And you'll want to be out at the uh, sports arena to watch them often. Oklahoma State and Utah Friday and Saturday of next week. Got some interesting uh, matchups here today. Anthony Davis, who's just getting a tremendous round of applause as he gallops across the field, followed by his coach, John McKay. Anthony Davis, a Heisman Trophy candidate. Tom Clements, the Irish Heisman Trophy candidate. Pat Hayden, a Rhodes Scholar candidate. You know, that's an amazing accomplishment when you consider that you're talking about a major college football team that has a man in line, perhaps, for the Heisman Trophy, and his quarterback is in line for a Rhodes Scholarship. I think we go back all the way to Byron Wizard White before we find a man that was uh, an All-American football player, a Heisman Trophy candidate, and also a Rhodes Scholar. Very interesting set of circumstances involving Pat Hayden, who is probably one of the finest young men ever to pull on the jersey of the University of Southern California Trojans. We're at the center of the field now, captains being introduced to captains, and that uh, rather lengthy process today, inasmuch as Tom told you, the Trojans have sent out no fewer than six captains, one of them being Anthony Davis, and of course the Notre Dame people well remembering Anthony's tremendous performance two years ago when he went for 368 yards on the day and scored six touchdowns against the Fighting Irish. So some of the men will be out here for even a further measure of revenge for that particular performance, although the Irish did win last year and went on to become national champions. All right, we've had the flip of the coin. Notre Dame won the toss and will receive. Uh, so our starting lineups for the Fighting Irish. At tight end, Robert Robin Weber. At left tackle, Steve Neese. Left guard, Al Wujic. And at center, Mark Brenneman. Right guard, Jerry DiNardo. At right tackle, Steve Sylvester. At split end, Pete Demerly. At quarterback, Tom Clements. Left halfback, Mark McClain. At right halfback, Al Samuel. And the fullback, the very impressive Wayne Bullock. Defensively for the Trojans. Linebacker Dale Mitchell. At left tackle, Gary Jeter. The nose guard, Otha Bradley. Right tackle, Art Riley. Outside linebacker will be Ed Powell. Inside linebackers for the Trojans, Richard Wood and Kevin Bruce. The left corner, Danny Reese. The right corner, Don Bush. At safety, Marvin Cobb. And the rover will be Charles Phillips. Already before an almost full crowd here at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum on a rather dull overcast day, which of course will not dull the spirits of the supporters of either side. Just about ready for the kickoff and here to call all the action for you. The voice of the Trojans, Tom Kelly. Thank you, Bud Tucker. We've got Chris Lima-Halu with the ball on the 40, ready to kick it off. And Terry Urich, E-U-R-I-C-K, and Al Samuel back in the twin receiver spot, standing up the goal line. Urich is a freshman. Samuel is a senior from Newport News, Virginia. Lima Halu set. There's the boot, and this game is underway. It's a low kick, bouncing down inside the 20, picked up at the 14 to 15 yard line, and brought back by Wyler, the fullback, where he's hit and dropped by Ricky Odom down on the kickoff unit for the Trojans, and Notre Dame will put it in play. The Irish will have it first and 10, starting from their own 20 yard line. Kickoff was returned from the 13 to the 27 yards by Weiler. Notre Dame will operate from a straight T formation. They'll have a flanker, sometimes a tight flanker, and always a split end wide. You'll see a lot of motion and counter motion stuff. Here they come, here's Tom. All right, we've got Pennick and Bullock in the backfield. Coming in motion is Samuel. Clements hands off, but the big man, number 30, Bullock hitting over the right side is met and stopped by Marvin Cobb and Powell along with Gary Jeter, and they say his forward progress will be to the 22, give him a gain of, well, almost the 23, call it second and seven. 
Oklahoma defeated Oklahoma State 44 to 13. You know that game was 10-10 at the end of in the third period, and finally Oklahoma came on to win it. Clements faking keeps it himself, sets back inside, and Jeter is there and bends him double. So Gary Jeter, the young sophomore from Cleveland, Ohio, heavily recruited by Notre Dame, I might add, took Tom Clements, the McKees Rocks, Pennsylvania senior, and just about turned him into a pretzel. At the 24, a gain of one. It'll be third down and six now for the Irish at their own 24. Opening series, Notre Dame marching left to right across your radio dial. The Irish in white jerseys, gold trousers, gold helmets. The numerals are green. Clements is back to pass. He's getting a rush, fires over the middle. It is complete to Samuel. Hit gets away and is dropped at about the 31-yard line. And they'll mark his progress there. It'll be good for a first down. He was just under the linebackers. And he caught that one, got a real good shot from Phillips and Bush, but it's good for a first down Notre Dame on a third and long. Clements connects to Samuels, first down Irish. Ball is at the Irish 33, first and 10, nine-yard pickup on that. Up over the ball at center is Mark Brenneman for Notre Dame. Clements hands off and Phillips finds a small hole as he gets to the 36, maybe the 37. Stop made by Riley and Wood and Kevin Bruce. Up front, the Irish have Sylvester, DiNardo, Brenneman, Bojiak, Nice. Weber's the tight end. Big line. 6'4", 245. 6'1", 248. 6'3", 235. 6'2", 230. 6'3", 264. That's what's up front. The ball is at the Irish 37. Clements. Hands off and Bullock straight ahead again is met by Bruce and a host of the Cardinal-clad Trojans. They say his forward progress is to the 39. I think they're a little charitable with that. Stop made by any one of a number of SC defenders, Bruce and Mitchell leading the gang. Ball is shy of the 40. It'll be third down and four yards to go for Notre Dame in another big third down play. Bullock is carried three times for eight yards. Benick is in the slot on the right side, and Clements is rolling to the left. He is going to be hit and top in there very quickly. Was Bush along with Riley, and they busted through the Notre Dame line and dropped Clements back on the Irish 35 for a loss of four, and that'll be fourth and eight for the Irish in the kicking situation as Tony Brantley comes in. Well, they may not be the wild bunch, and they may be called the Rat Pack, but they're fired up for this one, Bud Tucker. No question about that. I think they read that one uh, very well, and the fake was to the front, in other words, where the lineman could see it, so it didn't work too well either. Here comes the punt. Brantley is standing back on the Irish 21. High snap, gets it and gets it away. Kind of a low end over end to Phillips at the 35. Fair catch at the 34. SC will put it in play. First and 10 Trojans on their own 34. 31-yard punt, no return. First period, no score. Trojans moving right to left across your radio dial with the ball for the first time. Pat Hayden, high formation now. He's got Davis and Farmer. Picked back to Davis on the sweep. At the 35, to the 38, maybe the 39. Up filling in on defense for Notre Dame. Coming up with Steve Niehaus, number 70. Also there was Drew Mahalik, number 45. The Irish have got Niehaus at 6'5", 266. Kevin Nosbush, 6'4", 265. Tom Eastman, 6'2", 230 pounds. Mike Fanning, 6'6", 253. And Jim Stock, 6'3", 214 across the front. After you get by that set of behemoths, I'll give you some more figures in a moment. The ball is at the Trojan 38. Second down. Hayden pitching back. Davis sweeping to a five side. Trying to turn the corner. Cat coming out of bounds. Chased out by Reggie Barnett. But the man who made the play fail was Greg Collins, the linebacker, number 50, who came up and turned the uh, would-be blockers back inside on top of Davis, and Barnett came up filling in to knock Davis out of bounds back at the original line of scrimmage, so it's going to be third and ten back at the 34. Dave Farmer comes in at the fullback spot, and Ricky Bell goes out. Eleven minutes remain in the first period. No score here at the Coliseum, and a crowd that will be very close to 90,000. In eager anticipation of this one, the Trojans and the Irish, and Hayden with third and long will probably go to the air. He's dropping back to pass. Beautiful protection. Sets up, looking. Fires over the middle. It's complete to Obradovic. Intercepted. Obradovic didn't have it. Intercepted. Picked off by Drew Mahalik. I thought Obradovic had it. Went right straight through his hands, apparently, and Mahalik grabbed it. And the Irish will have it with the first break of the football game on the Trojan 39. 
Notre Dame first and ten. It may, be, it may be that uh, Obradovich had the ball and was actually snatched right out of his arms just moments, instants after he made the uh, reception. At any rate, it's the Irish ball, and here they come. Right, Clemens brings them up, and at quarterback for the Irish, in the backfield, Samuels and Bullock. Clements back to throw. Rolling out, fires the pass, it is complete. Out of bounds at the 18-yard line is Monty Goodman. Senior back on the flanker back spot, chased out at the 18. 21-yard pass, first and 10, the Irish with a break, getting an interception at the SC 39, and now trying to cash it in, picking up 21 yards in one play. An excellent uh, completion on the uh, fake and then the drop back. Unfortunately, the Trojan linebackers committed themselves. All right, first down at the 18, handoff, Bullock straight ahead. He's at the 15, the 10. He's down to the Trojan eight-yard line. Heavy hitting Wayne, the train Bullock. 6'1", 233-pound senior from Newport News, Virginia. Has the ball on the Trojan nine-yard line as Phillips and Cobb make the stop. It's going to be second down and inches for the Irish at the nine. Notre Dame in two plays has come from the Trojan 39 to the Trojan nine yard line and now bidding to get on the board in the opening period here at the Coliseum. Clemens looks over the Trojan defense. Hands off Bullock straight ahead at the five, pulling out the Bradley. He's got a first down, it'll be first and goal for Notre Dame and the ball will be inside the Trojan five yard line. First and goal, Notre Dame. Call it the four. I disagree with the distinction that Wayne uh, runs like a train, just more like only the engine. Well, after the engine runs over you, it really makes much difference, does it? How many cars <laughs> trail? <laughs> oh, here's something. Just inside the five, first and goal, Notre Dame. Clements, the quarterback. Sends Samuels in motion, gives to Bullock, straight ahead, diving, diving to about the two and a half yard line, a pickup of about two and a half yards. Up front, he was riding the back of offensive uh, tight end, Ken McAfee, a freshman, 6'5", 235 pounds, down to the two, second and goal at the two, and Bullock just kind of climbed on top of McAfee's back on the slant. There's the big tight end uh, leading the charge for Notre Dame. Second and goal, Irish at the Trojan, two-yard line. Clemens, the quarterback, gives to Bullock. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, Notre Dame. with 9.20 in the first quarter. The Irish have gone 39 yards in five plays following the interception by Drew Mihalik. Bullock scoring, and now we'll have to try for the extra point. Reeve is there to try out of the hold by Frank Alaco. Lines are set. Snap, ball is down, the kick is up, looks good, and it is good. And so, with 9.20 remaining in the first period, the score at the Coliseum, Notre Dame 7, USC nothing. So Notre Dame goes 39 yards in five plays. Bullock gets the touchdown from the two. Bullock has 26 yards and seven carries. The big play in the drive was a 21-yard completion from Clements to Goodman. And that following the interception, put the ball on the Trojan 18, and from there it was just Bullock, Bullock, and Bullock. All right, we've got Davidson Ford as the deep end. Taking off is McLaughlin, who's a California product, Southern California from Santa Barbara. He boots it. It is long, and it is deep, and Davis watches it bounce and go out of the end zone. Oh, we'll go to the Trojans on the 20, first and 10. That touchdown was Wayne Bullock's 12th of the year, and ironically enough, he came into this one tied at 11 touchdowns with Anthony Davis of the Trojans. The Irish, I'm sure, remembering two years ago, the 72 game, and Davis with the six touchdowns, and his kickoff returns and for long, long touchdown runs against the Irish, something nobody ever does. Hasn't. Probably never will again. They found themselves a kicker. If Davis is going to run some of these back, he may have to line up at the pair style end. All right, first and ten. Trojans on their own 20, trailing 7-0. Straight ahead, no room at the end as Davis is hit and dropped at the line of scrimmage. In very quickly for Notre Dame, Steve Niehaus, Cincinnati, Ohio product. He's a junior, 6'5", 266 pounds. That doesn't seem to be a fair matchup. John McKay said earlier in the week that he thought the secret was if his team could move against the Irish, they could win the game. So
so far it has not developed in that manner, and let's just see what is going to happen. Here they come. Second down and 10. Trojans, the ball on the SC 20-yard line. Notre Dame leads 7-0. Hayden went to the air, and the first series was intercepted. Led to the Irish score, and Hayden's back to pass now. Beautiful protection. Firing over the middle, incomplete. Could be a flag down, I would think. I see no flag. Diggs was knocked off his pins. The ball went sailing over his head, and no flag. Boy, Drew Mahalik hit Diggs, knocked him um, toenail over top knot. No flag. No flag, although two officials right on top of the play. Just a week ago, we saw more flags for pass interference. People talked to one another in the defensive secondary. All right, third down and 10 at the 20. Trojans trailing 7-0 to Notre Dame, and the Irish off uh, the mark in a hurry here. Hayden handing off on the delay to Davis. Up to 25, up to the 30. I don't know if he's got the first down. Depends on where they mark it. He was hit and spun to the turf just at the 30-yard line. Making the stop was Harrison. It is going to be fourth down, I believe, although Hayden says, I'd like to have a little closer look at that. And they're going to bring the chain in. Well, you know, there's a very important play coming up, bud, this early in the ball game. And how much of it relied on the fact where the official put that ball down? Well, so it is always on those calls. One thing about Pat Hayden, you may rest assured that he will not take the official's word for it. If there is any question at all, he'll call for the measurement. This time, however, it looks like they're not going to give it to him. No, they are not. And the Trojans appear to be in the mood to go for the first down. They're at their own 30-yard line. It is fourth and inches at the 30. And they're going for it. And Notre Dame has bunched in like a goal line stand. Irish lead, 7-0. Hayden didn't get it. Hayden trying to go for the first down, did not. Notre Dame will take over on the Trojan 30-yard line. Drew Mahalik and the Irish fired up now have a golden opportunity to blow this game right out of proportion early. Incredible that Bob Hayden would go on the sneak on that play. I don't think you can ever see or have ever seen a line more thoroughly stacked with huge bodies than that was. It just didn't uh, seem from the start that Pat Hayden had any kind of a chance. Well, however, to stop the Irish now on the Trojan 30-yard line with a first down and all this momentum will be a monumental task. I don't know if SC can do it. All right, Clemens up the quarterback spot and keeps it. Back to pass. Rolling fires and long downfield. His man is wide open. Touchdown to Demerley. Touchdown. Touchdown as Clemens hits Demerley on a 30-yard pass. 30 yards, one play. And in the first quarter, the Irish did fair to blow this one wide open. Nothing incredible about the play, just a straightaway fade from the line of scrimmage, but then Demerley just simply ran, outran the defense, had to reach for the pass slightly, however it was in there. Here comes the try for the extra point. Reeve is back to try, the snap that is down, the boot is up, and it's good. And now, with 7.39 remaining in this, the first quarter, the score at the Coliseum, Notre Dame 14, USC nothing. Irish leading 14 to nothing. It's interesting, Bud, to note that Tom Clements has used the SC secondary like a passing drill. Nine yards complete to Samuels, 21 yards to Goodman, and now a 30-yarder complete to Demerley. He's three for three, 60 yards and a touchdown. And that's against the defense that intercepted 21 passes. That's right, and led the back eight in uh, interceptions. However, he hasn't been intimidated, and he hasn't used anything that fancy. That last one, as we mentioned, Demerley just simply outran the defense. Pat McLaughlin kicks off for the Irish. High end over end, not as long as the other one. Davis at the two-yard line. 10, 15, 20. And that's where he goes down. A host of white-clad Irish are there to bring him down right at the 20-yard line. Davis literally buried under a ton of beef. A ton of fun led by Randy Harrison and Jeff Weston. They'll mark it, well, almost to 21. Let's call it the 20. First and 10, SC on their own 20-yard line, and the Trojans, trailing 14 to nothing, have got to put something together here with 7.33 remaining in the first period, or this game is going to get so far out of reach, they will never be back in it. Aiden to Davis finds a hole at the 20. 25. Hitton drops as he gets to the 27. 
Barnett over there met him with a numbers high tackle. Picked Davis right up off the ground and threw him back. Farmer threw a pretty good uh, block. Davis progressed to the 27. And uh, Anthony did a little bit of juking over there. Had he gone straight ahead, he might have run right by Barnett. Put the big move on Reggie Barnett. However, Barnett was not buying. Second down and three. Ball is at the Trojan 27. SC trailing 14 to nothing. A little under seven minutes remaining in the first period. Hayden looks over the Irish defense, which is formidable. They give the foul straight ahead. Moves his way over the 35 and out very close to the 40-yard line. Big hole in the middle of the Irish line as McCaffrey and Bain bang some people around. Mahalik and Nasbush made the stop. At the 40-yard line, it'll be a first down for SC. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Trojan Radio Network. All right, first and ten Trojans on their own 40-yard line. Digs in motion. Hayden takes the snap. Hands off on a delay. Inside is Paul Farmer, the fullback, and he's spun down and turned upside down as he crosses the 40 to the 43. Tom Eastman is there along with Mahalik to make the stop at the 43. Pickup of three, second and seven. Carter goes out. Davis is back in. Farmer is out, and Bell is in. Hayden, the quarterback, digs at the flanker back spot. Trojans moving right to left across your radio dial, trailing 14 to nothing. Second and seven, ball on the SC 43. Digs in motion to the left. They give to Davis. He's at the 45, the 47, the 48 yard line. Diving on the slant, for he is stopped and brought down by Collins, along with Jim Stock and Tom Eastman. Trio of the Irish there to meet him at the 48 yard line. Pick up a five, and it'll be third and two. Davis has got 22 yards in six carries. Bell goes out. Farmer is in at the fullback spot for the Trojans. Boy, the Irish with two lightning strikes, bruising thing, and the other just 30 yards right now, a pass. Clemens to Demerle. Third down. Hayden with it. Keeps it. At midfield, chased out of bounds at the Irish 45-yard line. Hayden got a quarterback keep. Mahalik is there to run him out of bounds. And the Trojans putting a drive together now of some substance are at the Irish 45. They started on their own 20 in the first and 10 SC. Hayden is moving a little bit better now because he has got more flexible and taking advantage of the fact that the Irish have their major key on Anthony Davis. It's the first time in the ball game, which is just about 10 minutes old, that SC has converted a third down into a first down. It is first and 10. SC on the Irish 45. Notre Dame leading 14 to nothing. Hayden rolling to his left. Gets some protection, may run. 45. Coming outside, up the 40 and chased out of bounds and then hit. Long after he was off the playing field and he really charges the official and Pat Hayden, who really is as mild-mannered a kid as you'd want to fight, is really upset over the late hit that threw him clean into the Irish bench and not a flag on the play. No question that he was hit at least two steps inside the uh, sideline. However, the official either Noticing it is certainly turning a deaf ear to the appeal of the Trojan fans here this afternoon. Here they come again. They're bullying the officials, but it'll go for naught. I've learned that most of them are deaf. Some have trouble with their eyesight. Former a Farmer straight ahead is to the 35, 36-yard line. He's very close to a first down. Mahalik and Collins dropping in there. He did not get the first down, short of the necessary yardage. It's going to be third in inches. The ball up the Irish, 35. Farmer goes out, Ricky Bell comes in, 440 remaining in the first period. Mark it right up the 36-yard line. He's got to go to the 35 for the first down. McKay goes wide to the right. Notre Dame leading, 14 to nothing. Third and one now for the Trojans on the Irish 36. They give to Davis. He stopped back at the line, going to try and outrun him. He can't. He has stopped back at the 40-yard line. Randy Payne, a 5'9", 180-pound junior who's very quick, caught Davis and spun him down. Davis started into the middle, was hit. Bounced off a tackler and then tried to outrun somebody going wide and couldn't. And it's going to be fourth and five for the Trojans on the Irish 40-yard line. And this time, SC sends in the kicking team. Went for the first down on their own 30. And now with a fourth and five are going to kick from the Irish 40. Harrison is the deep man. Luke is standing back at the SC 45. Irish lead, 14 to nothing. 
Luca sends a high spiral, deep air catch in the end zone. There'll be no return as the ball will come out to the Notre Dame 20, first and 10. The Irish will take over, leading 14 to nothing with 3.41 to go in the first period. USC football is coming to you from Los Angeles. according to the announcement being read by John Ramsey and up on the board, the National Football Foundation student athlete team for 74, an English major with a cumulative grade point average of 3.7 and of course is a candidate for a Rhodes Scholarship. Well, Notre Dame, very impressive. The Irish with a first and 10 on their own 20 now, leading 14 to nothing. Two lightning strikes. An interception gave them the ball on the Trojan 39 a 21-yard pass play, and then Bullock, Bullock, and more Bullock, finally for the one-yard touchdown run. And then the Trojans, trying to go for a first down on their own 30, gave the ball to Notre Dame as they failed to make the first down. And in the first play, Mike Clements fired to Demoli, 30 yards in the end zone. He was all alone, and the Irish have 14. The Trojans struggling to get a mark on the board. Notre Dame now first and 10 on their own 20. And off, swinging wide, cutting back. The flanker to the 25-yard line is Pennick. Pennick is 6'1", 200 pounds, a senior. He's a fellow who went 85 yards against the Trojans last year. Riley was there to make the stop. Pick up a five on the flanker reverse. Second and five for Notre Dame at their own 25. Demerly, Sylvester, Denardo, Brenneman, Wujiak, Nice, and Weber up front for the Irish. Samuel's in motion. Now they're coming to this side. He cuts back in, gets the first down as he crosses the 30 to the 32-yard line before Cobb, along with both of Bradley and Phillips, make the stop. But not till there's a first down at the 32. First and 10, Notre Dame. And the Irish have really dominated this football game. They lead 14 to nothing, and they're in charge out there on the floor of the Coliseum this afternoon. Under three minutes remaining in the first period here. First and 10 at the 32. Samuel's in motion. Hand off to Bullock. Has a hole. He's in the secondary at the 40. Falls down by himself at the 41-yard line and may have turned an ankle. And Bullock is down, but the Irish immediately send in Tom Parise, a junior fullback, as Bullock may have turned his ankle and gone down. He certainly wasn't hit. Hopefully Bullock will be all right. We can duck in some scores here. Navy bombed Army today, 19 to nothing. Boston College defeated Holy Cross, 38 to six. And in some uh, significant games, Turkey Day and yesterday, Texas 32, Texas A&M three, Penn State 31, and Pitt 10. Bullock is still laying flat on his back on the turf and being attended to by the Notre Dame Medical Corps. Paris has come on. Paris is a junior. He's only 6 feet, 215 pounds at the fullback spot. Clements wants to come over and talk to Errol Parsegian. I think the Irish are going to be charged with a timeout. Bullock is up. One thing off. His left ankle, uh, he seems to be favoring. A little doubt, but when he turned it, I don't think it's any more than just uh, that. Possibly a sprain, but certainly no more than that. The Irish have not won here in the Coliseum since 1966 when they beat the Trojans 51 to nothing. I know you're saying to yourself, why bring up a distasteful subject like that? But when the score is 14 to nothing and they've scored two of the three times they've had the ball, one thinks about things like that. First down, uh, no, second down and about a yard to go. The give is to the fullback, Maurice, and he's got the first down as he hits to the 43 and falls forward to the 44. So the fullback, who's come on to replace Bullock, gets the Irish a first down at their own 43, say the officials. It is the sixth first down for Notre Dame. They lead 14 to nothing, and we've got 2.20 remaining in the first period. Clements, the quarterback for the Irish, first and 10 on his own 43. Then Fennick in motion, hands off to Paris and the junior fullback behind a good charge by the Irish front wall, carries to the 49. Up front leading the way, Wojciak. Al Wojciak, 6'2", 230-pound junior guard, and believe me, he's a 
A tough customer. At the 49, a pickup of six, second and four. Notre Dame. Ball nearly at midfield now as the Irish take over after holding the Trojans. Started this drive on their own 20. Samuels in motion. Hand off to Paris. He is hit by Wood, again by Mitchell, but not till he carries over the 50 and down to about the Trojan 46-yard line. So that's going to be a pickup for a first down. Five yards down to the Trojan 46. And like time, the Irish just keep marching inexorably on Bud Tucker, and nothing seems to stop them. John McKay warned against the mobility of that Notre Dame front wall. The defense is finding out precisely what the coach was talking about. He also talked of early breaks determining the game, and so far the Irish have capitalized on two. Paris back inside, refuses to be stopped, and he carries to the 40. Six yards more, second and four, and the Irish on an offense are really taking Mitchell, Jeter, Bradley, Bruce, Riley, Powell, all part up front, really moving the Trojans around. Four carries for Paris since he came in to replace Bullock, and he's got 19 yards. Notre Dame really moving people around. And now they've got a second and four at the Trojan 40. Clements hasn't gone to the air on this, going to keep himself. That's the best play SC has seen all day. Clements gets just about a half yard to the 39. Bradley made the stop there. It'll be third and three at the Trojan 39. More of that would be more to the liking of SC on defense. Third down, three yards to go. Less than half a minute to play in the first period. Notre Dame leads 14 to nothing. And they have the ball on the Trojan 39. This will be the last play of this period. Clements has Samuels in motion, keeping, pitching on the option. At the 40. Hit and dives inside the 35 to the 34-yard line. First down, Notre Dame. Reese upended him, but not before Samuels on the pitch. At the first down easily, as the quarter is near completion. Six seconds remain. The ball up to 33. Irish started this drive on their own 20 running now and we're going to be out of time here and that is the end of the first period at the Coliseum with the score Notre Dame 14 USC nothing second quarter getting underway the ball at the Trojan 33 Notre Dame has a total of 138 yards 78 on the ground 60 in the air the Trojans have 50 yards rushing none passing ball is at the 33 it'll be first and 10 for the Irish and they've sent some new backs in. Yurik is in, and I think I saw young Mark McLean, a sophomore back, go in. We'll check for you. Yes, McLean is in. Yurik is in in Paris. Yeah, that means... Those are the backs behind Tom Clements. Irish quarterback at the Trojan 33, leading 14 to nothing. Trying to get a drive, keep it going. It started on his own 20. Clements pitching out. Coming wide as Goodman at the 30. 25. He's hit and thrown out of bounds at the 21-yard line. Goodman, Yurik. Yurik thrown out of bounds at the Trojan 21 and the SC defense, which has been superb this year, which has been utterly superb, bending sometimes but never yielding, looks as though it is not out there today. I'm sure part of it is due to the fine offensive work of the Notre Dame line, but the SC defenders seem to be almost non-existent. That's a pickup of 12 yards and a first and 10 Irish at the Trojan 21. And off, Paris finds a some tough resistance at the 20, but he spins inside that to about the 18. Going to be a pickup of uh, three yards. They marked it at about just inside the 19. Call it a gain of two. Second and eight at the 19. Second quarter just underway. The Irish leading 14 to nothing. They started this drive on their own 20. And they're down at the Trojan 19. And... Clements is back to throw. Plenty of time over the middle, and it's complete at the four-yard line. All alone at the four-yard line was McAfee, and nobody near him. Clements has done a very good job of calling his plays, mixing them up well. Just, just before the end of the quarter, he lulled the defense with his, uh, ignoring his man in motion, and then made the pitch out just before the end of the quarter, that sort of thing. Now his first pass in quite some time, so he's mixing it up very well, and the USC defense seems confused to say the least. First and goal at the four. Paris is down to the two. There he is stopped. Bottom of the pile was Dale Mitchell and Wood. So the ball is going to be second and goal Notre Dame at the two. This will be an 80-yard drive by the time the Irish get through with it. 
it has been so easy. It looks almost effortless. Trailing 14 to nothing, the Trojans are going to find themselves in a real hole here in a minute. Second and goal, the give to Paris, he stopped. That brings a roar of approval from across the way. Trojan fans have had a little or nothing to cheer about. Howell made the stop, wrapping up Paris. They say his progress is at the three, a loss of one. Third and goal at the three. That's the first time I've heard the SC section cheer across the way, bud. Now watch uh, Notre Dame use something a little uh, more fancy, some wide stuff here. Clements but. is coming to the sideline to talk to Parsegi, and I saw no indication of a timeout. Timeout is being taken on the field. 13-11 remaining in the first half. 14 to nothing, Notre Dame. Third and goal for the Irish. On the Trojan three-yard line, Samuel's in motion. Clements rolling out, may run. He is at the five, he throws incomplete. Pass intended in the end zone for number 22, McLean. Incomplete. So it'll be fourth and goal, Notre Dame at the Trojan three. I don't know, Bud, if they can hold them off here, although the field goal kicking team is coming on and Dave Reeve is coming out. Might give SC the lifted needs, but would appear the Irish are going to come away with three points at least. Baylor beat Rice 24-3, to and the Baylor Bears are going to the Cotton Bowl. It's going to be the first time in a lifetime. How about Texas owned the Cotton Bowl for a while there. From the 10-yard line, slight angle left to right. Reeve will try the field goal. Fourth down, there's the snap. High, he gets the boot away, straight and true. And so, a field goal of 25 yards. It's the Irish on top with 13-03 in the second quarter. A drive from the 20 that came up short. 80 yards, 16 plays, field goal by Reeve, and the score, Notre Dame 17, the Trojans nothing. Defense did stiffen, but the Irish come away with three points and it's 17 to nothing and Notre Dame has picked up something on the board three of the four times they've had their hands on the football but Tom as you mentioned had uh, USC been able to stop them there that is of course had Notre Dame elected to go for the six points it may have lifted the spirits of the Trojans tremendously and Eric Procedian is fully aware of that so he would give them no such opportunity to get that kind of lift to put that three points in there McLaughlin the Santa Barbara Notre Dame player is uh, back to kick and we've got Davison Ford standing at the goal line kick is uh, sideways coming to Ford at the 5, the 10, take it Davis, the 15, the 20, 25, 30, had one man to beat, but he couldn't get away, and wrapping up was number 18, Ted Bergmeier, who had Davis, had Davis been able to get away from his grasp, he might have busted it, but he didn't, and the Trojans with pretty good field position, first and 10 at their own 35, trailing 17 to nothing. Have got to butt, in my opinion, put together a drive now and get seven points to bring this game back to respectability. Aiden, the quarterback, first down at his own 35. Rolling out to his left, makes the handoff at the 35. Still on his feet at the 40. See where they mark his forward progress as he's hit and driven back. Shy of the 40-yard line, they say, as he was hit and thrown back by Randy Harrison, among others. So Hayden on the keeper. Rolling to the short sidelines in front of the Trojan bench to call up the 40, pick up a five, second and five. Pat Hayden is operating on a slightly gimpy knee today, but so far it has seemed sturdy enough. He's carried four times for 18 yards. 12.25 remaining in the first half. 17 to nothing, Notre Dame. Shades of 1964. Ball is at the Trojan 39 and a half yard line. In motion, digs to the short side. Hayden with the snap, swing pass, complete. 35, the 40, 45, Davis at midfield, Davis at the 45, the 40, fighting his way out of bounds at the Notre Dame 37 yard line. Well, they sprung Davis outside with a swing pass, Hayden to AD, and that brings the roar from the Trojans across the way. 23 yards down to the Irish 37. First and 10. Well, that's the type of thing the Trojans are going to have to do. They're going to have to get Anthony Davis out into some open ground. As Anthony said this week, I know that the Notre Dame defenders are big. I hope they're not too fast. 
That's the best way the Trojans have of finding out. At the 37, first and 10, Carter is in now to replace Davis, going to the sidelines for a rest. Hayden pitching back to Carter on the sweep, gets the block, but not enough as he's down to the 36. Going to be a gain of no more than one. Trying to turn the corner. Mahalik was there. And up also Jim Stock, number 48, making the stop for the Irish. Gain of one, second and nine. Carter out, and Davis is coming back in. Bell is out, and Farmer's back in. Eleven and a half minutes remain in the first half. 17 to nothing. The Irish lead the Trojans, who have started this drive on their own 35 and have it on the Notre Dame 36 with a second and nine. Digs in motion to the right side, and Hayden rolling, hands off to Davis. Back inside, dropped in the middle of the line, at the line of scrimmage, no gain. Stop made by Collins, along with Dubinetsky. At the line of scrimmage, the 36, it'll be third and nine. So, I think, as long as the Irish have that 17-point advantage, they've got to be loosened up, and the only way to do it is to try to get Davis one-on-one -on -one outside. But to do that, they're going to have to go wide, throw to him, etc. Third and long now, and a big play for Hayden, who's back to throw. Fires over the middle, incomplete. Obradovich, the intended receiver, and Hayden threw it behind him, and Obradovich turned, could have caught it, maybe should have caught it. But he didn't. Had it incomplete. Had it actually just for the briefest split second. Dropped it as he uh, fell to the ground to the fact that he had to turn around so quickly. Unfortunate play for the Trojans. All right, the ball is at the Irish 36, and SC with a fourth down and nine yards. He's going to go for it. They trail 17 to nothing with 10.43. They fail on this. The Irish will start from excellent field position. Hayden back to pass. Big rush. He is buried back at the 48-yard line. Barreling through, Drew Mahalik came through the SC line like it wasn't there. Well, it, was, it wasn't any question that they read the pass. They had uh, defenders, linebackers, stunting all over the place. Tremendous rush on Pat Hayden. No chance to get it away, despite the fact that he had two receivers open. So instead of having it on the 48, on the 36, I should say, the Irish take over first and 10 on their own 48. And that is in field position. That is... The garden spot. Mm. Position A. Leading 17 to nothing. Clements turns, keeps it himself, pitching back, sweeping to the 45. Midfield. 45 and out of bounds at the Trojan 40 is Ronnie Goodman, who caught a 21 yard pass earlier from Clements, and now he turns the corner and scampers to the Trojan 39, a 14 yard pickup. First and 10, Notre Dame. Cobb and Phillips finally drove him out. But the Irish turned the Trojan end as if it weren't there. Ten and a half minutes remaining in the first half. 17 to nothing, Notre Dame. They are really socking it to the Trojans here this afternoon. Clements keeps cuts back inside and carries to the Trojan 35. He had panic in motion on the option, but elected to keep it himself. Jeter and Powell made the stop. At the Trojan 35, a gain of four, second and six. Visiting on the Trojan bench today from the Portland Storm of the World Football League, former USC coach Craig Furtick. And Craigie can't believe his eyes. Irish have 11 first downs. The Trojans have three. 17-0 Notre Dame. Clements gives to Penick back inside, diving to the 30-yard line. Tackle made by Mitchell and Jeter. But a pickup of five, and it's going to be third and one at the Trojan 30. motion stuff works so good when you have the personnel. That formation, that type of thing used to be called the Delaware offense, which is a sneaky way of getting in this score, Tom. Delaware 35, Youngstown 14. The Blue Hens won again, huh? At the 30-yard line. Third and about a yard and a half. Straight ahead inside the 30, close to the first down. Tempers are getting just a tad short down there in the field. Penick did not get the, uh, police did not get the first down. He's practically at the 30-yard line, just nosed inside the 30. So it's fourth, fourth and one at the 30. Nine minutes remaining in the first half. Gary Jeter and Steve Neese doing a bit of a huckle buck down there. And I tell you, that's two pretty big bears to be dancing together. All right, Clements now with a fourth and less than one. 
hands up. Police, the fullback, has got the first down as he barrels to the Trojan 37. I make it the Trojan 27, and it is the first down Notre Dame. Bradley makes the stop, and the Irish keep marching. Well, they say the 28, but regardless, he has the first down. That's number 12 in the first down department for the Irish. Coming out is Pennick. Samuel is in. Trojan 28-yard line. Sid Samuel in motion, rolls to the right, fires the pass downfield, incomplete. Flag goes down in the backfield, and I think we're going to have a roughing the passer call against the Trojans. I don't know. Maybe not. Motion call. Offensive pass interference. First penalty of the game. Now that flag was thrown in the air. Notre Dame backfield. Flag was thrown behind the line of scrimmage. I don't quite understand an offensive pass interference call there. The Trojans, however, will take it, Tom. That is probably the first break, if it can be called that, that the Trojans have had against the way this Notre Dame offense has been moving. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Trojan Radio Network. Second and 25. Irish with the ball on the Trojan 43. Clements to pass. Throws a little screen effort. It is caught. He hits back to the line and finally dropped. It's McAfee. Flag goes down and there'll be a late hit call against the Trojans. All of a sudden, the officials have found their yellow flags. I wonder where they were when they took Hayden off the sidelines and about tore him in two. McAfee was hit back of the line of scrimmage and the Trojans are going to be assessed for a late hit. Happened back around the 49-yard line so they'll walk off 15 from there. They had a terribly costly call to the Trojans who had uh, managed to pick up a 15-yarder against Notre Dame and then stop the play behind the line of scrimmage. That is a terribly costly call. Now, you know, the penalty occurred back at the 49, but they walked it off from the line of scrimmage. No, they didn't. They walked it off from the 49. They've got it down to the 33. All right. Irish with the ball on the Trojan 33 now. We may have a full-scale fight for this one's over. Clements throwing long downfield. Intercepted. Picked off by Phillips at the 5, 10, 15. Upended. He's at about the 18-yard line. Demerley, the intended receiver. Phillips did his something. SC will take over with eight minutes to go in the first half. Tremendous leaping catch by Charlie Phillips, and that may be the one break or at least uh, turning point that the Trojans have been looking for. Timeout is being taken on the field. For the second time now, SC has stopped Notre Dame. If you can call allowing him to get just a field goal, a complete stop. Eight minutes remain in the first half. The Irish 17, the Trojans nothing. From the 19, first and 10, SC, Hayden back to pass. Puts it off the big screen pass to Davis. He's at the 20, 25, 27-yard line. Going to be a pickup of six, maybe seven. Randy Payne was there to make the stop. Took Obradovich to tight end and split him wide about, oh, five or six yards from the, on the line of scrimmage. And that screen effort to Davis carries to the 27 which uh, seems to indicate what we brought up a few moments ago, bud, that for the Trojans to pick up any substantial yardage on this Notre Dame team, which is mighty big and mighty tough defensively, if they're going to use Davis, they're going to have to get him outside one-on-one -on -one and give him some room to operate. Couldn't agree more thoroughly, Tom. They've got to get him out there where he can float. Second and two for the Trojans on their own 27. In motion now is Diggs. Hayden turns, gives to Davis, straight ahead. Well, he's shy of the first down as he gets to the line of scrimmage and maybe a yard. Might have gotten to the 28. Eastman was there to make the stop for Notre Dame. Uh, it really is awfully tough going up the middle of that line against the, uh, the Irish on defense. There's not much give to those people. They say just uh, at the 27 and a half, so it's going to be third and call it two at the line of scrimmage. SC with the ball. 6.48 remaining, and the ball is at the Trojan 27 and a half yard line. Notre Dame leads 17 to nothing. Hayden barking signals, holding to the right. They run with it. 25, he's at the 30. Cuts back in, 35, and out of bounds. At the 35-yard line, first down, Trojans. 
Collins and Payne made the stop on Pat Hayden. See where the officials, 35 is where they're going to mark it down. It'll be first and 10. Fourth first down for the Trojans. Before this drive started, Notre Dame had the ball for 40 offensive plays and USC for 21. Asked if he likes to see John, uh, Pat Hayden run, John McKay said yes. Gives you a chance to pick up a first down when your receivers are covered, but you have to hate, hate to see him run into that pile of livestock. First down and 10 at the Trojan 35 to the short sideline, David. Find the small hole at the 40, head down at the 45, 48 yard line. Harrison made the stop. Well, I think win, lose, or draw, one must agree. Anthony Davis is every bit an All-American and Heisman Trophy candidate because he had every right to be stopped and knocked off his pins at any one of two or three times on that little scamper, but he just refused to go down until forced and bowled his way to the 48-yard line, a pickup of about 13 yards. Very nicely done. Going to be a first down for the Trojans at that point. Ten carries, 32 yards for Davis. Ball is on the SC 48. A little less than five minutes to go in the first half, and Notre Dame leads 17-0. Trojans desperately trying to get under in the end zone. Hayden rolling, being chased, tipped up. In very quickly was number 42, Eastman, middle linebacker, just barreled in in the speed of him. Hayden running away, he dove, got him by the ankle, and spun him down a loss. Back at the Trojan 43-yard line, a loss of five. It'll be second and 15. 5.20, the clock running. Trojans send Farmer out and bring Bell in at the fullback spot and Carter's in at the running back spot. McKay out of the huddle and wide left. Five minutes remaining in the first half. 17-0, Notre Dame. From the 43, digs in motion to the left. Hayden rolling back to the throw, fires the pass, batted down. Dubinetsky and Stock. I think Dubinetsky came in and batted it down, the safety. Say Stock was there to bat it away. 4.56 to play in the first half. Woody Hayes will be in at halftime, and I'm afraid the Trojans aren't doing much in the way of impressing Mr. Hayes, bud. <laughs> no, I'm sure that uh, as well as doing the color on television, he came out here to sneak in a little bit of scouting. I don't think he's finding anything out about the true Trojans. At least not the Trojans that we've watched all year, particularly on defense, Tom. 4.56 remaining in the first half. Trojans are trailing 17 to nothing. Whip in place. 17 to nothing. The Irish lead the Trojans, and Notre Dame has dominated this football game. SC with probably an inopportune call. Fourth down and about a yard to go in their own 30. Trailing 7 to nothing. Elected to go for the first down and didn't get it. And in one play, Clemens threw to Demerley in the end zone. Prior to that, Hayden had been intercepted. And the interception came at the Trojan 39-yard line, and in five plays... Bullock was in the end zone for a touchdown for Notre Dame, and then the Irish drove 80 yards. The SC defense stiffened and uh, forced a field goal, a 25-yarder. Tennessee and Vanderbilt ended up 21-21 all. Here the ball is at the 43. Third down for the Trojans and 15, and Hayden looks a pass to Davis. is hit back in the line and drops at the 39. In to make the stop, Jim Stock. 6'3", 215-pound junior defensive linebacker. Well, Duffy Doherty coined it, I guess, although it probably was the original with him. Hostile, mobile, and agile. The Notre Dame defense is every bit of that today. Lucas is in to kick, and so the Trojans, unable to move it this time, trailing 17 to nothing, will give it up. Bergmeier and Harrison, now the deep man, whistle on the play. Flags come fluttering down. I'll wait for the officials to call it. It'll be against SC. A legal procedure call against the Trojans. That'll be a five-yard walk-off. That's the first penalty against the Trojans. I think uh, that'll have to be the second. The other one was very costly. It Ball is at the Trojan 34 now. Lucas is still back to kick, and Harrison and Bergmeier are the deep men. Snap, big rush, gets it away, finds Farrell. That's driving Bergmeier back at the 15 over the shoulder catch. 
Coming back upfield at the 15, the 20. Down he goes. Hit and stop by Dale Logie, who's down there quickly, along with Lewis, Roberson, Cobb, Bush. Five-yard return on a 50-yard kick. Fine effort by Lucas. Got a big rush by Notre Dame. Ball is up to 21. Irish take over. First and 10 on their own 21-yard line. 3.42 remaining in the first half. Notre Dame leading 17 to nothing. Leading 17 to nothing. Clements, the quarterback. Hands off. Trying to turn outside up the 20-yard line. Wrapped up by Phillips as McLean. They still haven't thrown him down, but they run him off the field. McLean, a 6'1", 204, a sophomore. Stopped at the 20-yard line. Second and 11. 3.18 to play, and the clock is running. Trojans trailing 17 to nothing. And out to Paris, straight ahead, he gets a couple of yards to the 22. Bradley was there to lead the defense for the Trojans. 23 yard line. Third and eight, Notre Dame at their own 23. 240 remaining in the first half. Generally wide left. Pennick in motion, Clements rolling, may run, may throw, fires a pass upfield. It is caught inbound at the sideline. First down, Notre Dame. McLean catches it at the Irish 37. McLean appeared to be in the air as he made the reception. However, I assume both feet were in bounds as he floated out of bounds. First and 10 at the 37, 14-yard pass. Yurik comes in to replace uh, McLean, and so far, Clements and the Irish haven't done many things wrong today. They lead 17-0, get a big first down. Clements to throw, plenty of time, fires this one incomplete. Threw it up the sidelines, nobody there. Except two Trojans, Demerley, the intended receiver, I don't know where Demerley went to. You're so right, Tom, about Notre Dame not doing anything wrong offensively. I'm afraid that if you sit back and wait for them to uh, make mistakes, you may lose the ball game. Pennick is out, and Goodman is in for the Irish in the backfield. Demerley is wide to the far right side now. Urich in motion. Clement throwing. Little swing pass. Complete at 35, 40, 45. Midfield and jumps at the Trojan 49-yard line is Goodman. Boy, SC had him a dozen times and couldn't stop him. And he carries for a first down at the Trojan 49. 14 yards on that. First and 10, Notre Dame at the SC 49. Pennick caught that at least five yards back of the line of scrimmage and weaved his way upfield for 14 yards. Grant Solano made the stop. First and 10, Notre Dame. Hand off to Paris, and the fullback goal goes for a couple yards to the 47. Second down and eight at the Trojan 47. Pickup of two, minute 45 remaining in the first half. Notre Dame leads 17 to nothing. Rakes, a costly mistake, perhaps an error in judgment, and a very tough Notre Dame team have all combined to put the Trojans back 17 0. Here's Clements rolling to throw his hit, fires the pass upfield. It is caught at the Trojan 26 yard line reception by Ken McAfee. And boy, Clements is just riddling the SC pass defense to secondary. Two sideline passes, brilliant catches. Sideline passes that were just a hair short of being out of bounds. This is when things are really going well, when you can pull off maneuvers such as that. That is the 16th first down for the Irish in the first half alone. At the 26, Clements rolling back to throw. Rush fires over the middle. It is complete. Great reception once again by McAfee at the Trojan. Eight-yard line. It'll be first and goal with a minute 11 to play in the first half. They've marched all the way from their own 21, and Clements just riddling SC's defense. Seven for ten, one intercepted. He has them. Um, for one touchdown, 
out. I don't know, but what Woody Hayes may be in there making an out. Let's have Cornelius Green throw the ball some. First and goal at the eight-yard line. Clements hands off on the delay at the five. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Notre Dame. A play. Scores for the Irish. Taking a commanding 23 to nothing lead, and now leave out of the hold by Alaco by the extra point. It's up, it's good. 53 seconds remain in the first half, mercifully enough, as the Irish lead the Trojans 24 to nothing. I'm about as stunned as the 60, 80,000 Trojan fans. Today. I just had no idea that this game would develop in this manner in the first half, and I'm sure that uh, very few others did too. Tom, you and I, I know both agreed that it would probably be a close game with the big plays, one or two big plays deciding it. This is certainly not what anybody had anticipated. The Irish will kick off, and we've got Davis and Ford as the deep men. By now, Notre Dame doesn't even worry about who they kick it to. 53 seconds remain. McLaughlin to kick off. Boy, what a shocker this has been. Well, I don't know. I suppose it's a combination of things, not the least of which would be the talent this Notre Dame team has. Squib kick is going to bounce and go out of bounds at the 15, 16, 14-yard uh, line. Has to be some let down after winning the conference and beating UCLA. Has to be some... I'm sure that we're a pretty good football team and Notre Dame really hasn't played anybody this year and they staggered around against Pitt and they were barely able to beat Navy and they had a tough time against Rice and all you have to do is get one or two of those thoughts uppermost in your mind and get down by 14 points and baby you're in trouble. That's right. <laughs> you get uh, walking around and whistling and looking up in the air. This bunch will ambush you, won't they? Well, they've done it so far. They lead 24 to nothing. Notre Dame over SC. Boy, what a convincing first half the Irish have had. I think we should make uh, no mistake in pointing out that while the Trojans have not played as well as we have seen them play, that we take nothing away from this tremendous offense Notre Dame has unleashed here this afternoon. To say nothing of a defense that seems impregnable. I don't know. Reeve is kicking off, and he scripts it. Bounces it along the ground, taken by one of the up men at the 30. 35, 40, 41 yard line. Bell, the Trojans, to about the 41. SC will have it with 50 seconds to play. First and 10 at the Trojan 41. Becker made the stop. They did worry just a trifle about uh, who they kicked to that time, Tom. They said, We shall not send Anthony Davis to the locker room with a kickoff return. All right, Hayden comes to the line of scrimmage, which is his own 41. His team trailing 24 to nothing. Less than a minute to play in the first half. Hayden takes the snap, gives to Davis on the delay at the 40. Trying to find running room camp. Gets to the 43. Pick up the two. Eastman is there to make the stop. At the 43, it'll be second and eight. Clock stops with 44 seconds as uh, SC takes a timeout. Just looking back to see how far upfield the Trojans have uh, gotten. Let's see, SC got to their own 34 and then intercepted. SC got down to the 36 yard line. I'm sitting on the 30, Tom. They have not been here as yet. They certainly yet. haven't. They certainly haven't. In fact, they haven't been to the 40. They've been close. They really have not played much of this game with the ball in their possession in the Notre Dame side of the field. In fact, they haven't played much of the game in the Notre Dame side of the field. The Irish had a drive that went from their own 80, and they scored. They went from the Trojan 39, and they went from the Trojan 30. They had to go from their own 80, and then they went from their, they had to go 80 yards from their own 20, and then they went 79 yards. Makes no difference where you give them the ball, and they'll find a way to move it up the field. Hayden back to throw. Fires long. It is complete down at the Irish. 
36 yard line. Dig. Hit made by Mahalik. 38 seconds remaining in the first half. Ball is at the Irish 36, and that's as deep as the Trojans have gotten, and that's 21 yards on that pickup. First and 10. SC taking another of their timeouts. They have one remaining, and this is the first half. Weston is in for Nosbush. It is a very quiet crowd here at the Coliseum that is some 90,000 or thereabouts in number. I doubt if it's that high, although I think probably 85,000 tickets were sold for this game or thereabouts. Most of the roars have been from right below us where a predominantly heavy Notre Dame rooting section sits. And quite frankly, the Irish have had much to cheer about. But not one out here since 1966. And when they did then, it was 51 to nothing. They lead 24 to nothing now, and we are just in the last 38 seconds of the first half. Becker is in for Eastman. Trojans with a first and 10 on the Notre Dame 36-yard line. Aiden has gone all the way at quarterback. He's back to pass, and here come the Irish with a rush. Hayden fires long downfield. He's got Diggs incomplete in the end zone. Diggs in the end zone incomplete. Reggie Barnett running with him stride for stride in and out of his fingertips. Would have been a tough catch. It was a good throw, though. It was one of those just inches away from being a TD. Fine arm displayed by Hayden. Good speed by Diggs, but it didn't click. 31 seconds remaining, and it's a second down and 10 Trojans on the Irish 36-yard line. Dig was, was uh, perhaps a half a step behind the ball on that particular play, not to mention the fact that he was well covered by two defenders. I've got to believe, Bud, that the Trojans have got to do something in the way of putting a point on that board for themselves, or the second half is you can't play catch-up effectively. That big a deficit, 24 points against Notre Dame. I don't know. You've got to get something. Rush put on Hayden, firing again, throws, it is complete to Diggs at the 20, 15, the 10. He is down to the seven-yard line, and FC with 22 seconds will call another timeout, I'm sure. Great catch by Diggs. They ran him down, Collins did, and uh, Dubinitsky at the seven-yard line. First and goal at the seven, 29-yard pass. And FC, that's the longest pickup of the day for the Trojans, and Hayden has it down to where they could get on the board now. And they've used their last time out, 22 seconds left in the first half. Diggs used much the same pattern, however, just changed direction uh, rather than going all the way to the goal line on that one, and that uh, seemed very effective. No more timeouts, they're on uh, about the 12-yard line. 22 seconds will remain in the first half to be played here. First and goal at the 7, SC with the ball. And the deepest, of course, that the Trojans have been all afternoon. Hayden has been conferring with John McKay, comes back to his uh, Trojan teammates in the huddle. Davis and Bell are the running backs. Nosbush has come back in for Notre Dame. Twenty-two seconds remain. Clock will start. Walmart ready for play. Trojan fans imploring their team to get a mark around the board. One more timeouts. Hayden with a long shot rolling to his left at the 10. Looking, looking. Fires the pass. It is incomplete. Intended for John McKay, but Hayden threw it too high. Incomplete. Bergmeier was there. Six seconds went by. That stopped the clock. Hayden got a pretty good shot, too, when he let that ball go, and he's holding his left arm. But he looks over at the sidelines and puts his right hand up and says, I'm all right. Hayden is 5 for 11, one intercepted. He's got 76 yards through the air. Farmer comes in and Bell goes out. If Hayden were a left-handed passer, he'd be on the sidelines right now because his left arm has really got to be stinging, like somebody stuck it into a beehive, I'm sure. 16 seconds remain. Second down and goal at the Irish 7. 24 nothing Notre Dame. Pass to Davis at the 10. At the 5. Touchdown, USC. That is what they term acceleration. The way Anthony Davis turned it on after receiving the pass at about the 7-yard line. 
great day in the morning that he lift those legs and turn it on. There was going to be absolutely no denying the Trojans. A six-pointer on that one by Anthony Davis is 12th of the year. Six plays at 59 yards, the drive for the extra point, the boot is blocked. Stop by Adolph, tried to run it in, and could back at the 15 yard line so the Irish block the try for the extra point and the score with 10 seconds left in the first half is 24 to 6 Notre Dame leading FC seconds remain as the Trojans will kick off here in the second half, uh, the uh, second period, 10 seconds remaining in the first half, 59 yards in six plays, Aiden going through the air, and the last one, a seven-yard swing pass to Davis, who ran it in, just a foot race, five for the extra point is blocked, and 24-6, the Irish will get their hands on the football once again. Yurik and McLean of the deep man. It's a low kick. A scribber bouncing at the 24, fumbled and falling upon at the 22. I think McLean fell on it at the Irish 22. No, it was Yurik at the 22, and Notre Dame will put it in play. Seven seconds remain in the first half. So I'm looking to correct myself on Anthony Davis's touchdowns. I said it was his 12th of the year. Actually, it's his 15th. It was his 12th rushing. At the 27, Notre Dame will have the ball with seven seconds left in the first half and leading 24 to 6. Clements, the quarterback, keeps it, falls on the ground, and that'll eat up the clock. Trojans have no more timeouts left. And that'll do it for the first half here. And as they go to the dressing room and the roar of thousands of Notre Dame fans carrying the Irish to the dressing room, the score here at halftime Notre Dame 24, USC 6 will be back. Tom Kelly and Bud Tucker with you at intermission here at the Coliseum, where about 80-some thousand have sat in kind of stunned disbelief. Not all of them, because a good many of the 80,000 are pulling for the Irish of Notre Dame. And they've had a happy first half, as Notre Dame has completely dominated this great collegiate rivalry, this edition of it, leading 24-6 to here at the intermission. Coach Woody Hayes of Ohio State is with us. Before you talk to him, Bud, I've got to tell him that in seeing his football team a year ago in the Rose Bowl, I thought they might have been one of the nation's finest ever college football teams, the team that beat SC. Coach, thank you, you know, for coming with us. You know, I'd agree with you on that. And that USC the year before that, I felt, was one of the truly great teams I ever did see. Wouldn't it have well, been something for those two teams to have yes, played? Yes, it would have. I don't know who to won that. I don't want to interrupt you, Bubba. I had to say that to Coach Hayes. I broadcast the Rose Bowl game, and I was really impressed with this club a year ago. I thought thank it was you very much. much. I don't know. I seem to be impressed every time Woody Hayes brings a ball club out here. Woody, we're delighted to have you here today. I ask you naturally, first off, are you surprised at the manner in which Notre Dame has dominated Yes, here? yes. I think those couple of mistakes early in the game gave them momentum. There's another factor in this that I doubt a few people know, and that is that this type of offense that ERA uses there at Notre Dame is considerably different from what you normally meet. And to get ready for it in one week after you've played a highly emotional game to win your conference title, as USC did, I think they might be down a little bit from that. Plus the fact that Notre Dame is just playing almost error-proof ball. Their backs are running well. They got their best fullback hurt, and yet this other youngster's running well. Quarterback does well on his option, and his passing has been phenomenal. So uh, this is just a great Notre Dame football team today, and I think uh, uh, Southern Cal got caught sort of early, and they've had trouble regrouping, although this uh, last drive of theirs with uh, only a few seconds left in the clock was a real artistic achievement. It's amazing how far you can move that ball and how quickly you can move it with a few good passes. Woody, on a drive like that, you've got to have a little bit of good fortune going for you. This is the two sideline passes where the uh, receiver was just so close to being out of bounds, however, both times was in bounds, and I think that on a great drive like that, you've got to be a little bit fortunate, along with it, of course, you've got to be good, am I right? Yeah, but on the other hand, you remember there are two or three plays where the ball was thrown just a couple of feet behind the receiver, so it sort of all adds out, it adds up when you come down to it. 
that drive is a good one, but Notre Dame has certainly uh, mastered this team up to this point. Woody Hayes, what is John McKay saying right now? What is he telling his players? Well, John McKay is an extremely practical man, and uh, he, what he is doing as a good coach, he is trying to rebuild confidence into his team, and he's telling him something, the effect, that I know you can play just about five times that well. And at the same time, Arrow's trying to say that ball game isn't over yet. When we go the half ahead, we always yell, what's the score? And we yell back, nothing to nothing. And Arrow is approaching it that way, you can be sure. And John is trying to build confidence back into his ball club. And the fact that they did score right before the half could be an omen. Uh, that could mean that this game will get a lot closer than it is up to now. I think uh, that would have to have considerable to do with the feeling they have in the locker room, the fact that they have been able to get on the board. That's right, that's right. Notre Dame team. Can you tell us something technical that the Trojans will have to do in the second? Well, I'll tell you what they have to do. They've got to read that secondary of, uh, of uh, Notre Dame because Notre Dame is changing up. They're going into their traditional 4-4-3, uh, which is just a straight zone defense. But then they're coming with everything, with both linebackers, and they're coming up and playing them tight as the Dickens up there in the line of scrimmage in a tight man-to-man. -man. And uh, J.K. McKay was open on that post cut for a touchdown, but uh, the ball was hit and never got to him. So Notre Dame is very smart. They don't give you the same look. And Pat Hayden is going to have to read the difference in those looks because it is very imperative to throw a different type of pass when you're playing against a zone than when you're playing against a man-to-man. -man. And uh, Arrow seems to be making no effort to... Uh, before the ball snap, but he is playing those defenses exceedingly well. That line play of Notre Dame is really something. Then when they shoot those linebackers in the air, oh. it's sort of a scary sight. Oh, isn't that something? The way uh, they had guys standing all over the place on, uh, on that one where they caught Hayden. Are we correct in assuming, Woody, that Hayden has got to uh, keep the ball in the air or at least get Anthony Davis uh, out where he has room to Well, uh, he got the ball in the air, but he got it out to him for seven yards for a touchdown, which is virtually a quick sweep is about what it amounts to, although he threw it out there to him. But he's going to have to, it is, it's pretty apparent that they're going to stop Davis fairly cold on his sweeps and inside. And he is, you're absolutely right, he is going to have to pass the ball and he can pass it exceedingly well. But right now, Notre Dame is way on top, but that doesn't mean it stays that way. And I always ask my team to the half, I said, all right, if we're able to score 35 points in the first half, it doesn't mean that that other team couldn't do the same against us, so let's buckle down and get so back to work. Nothing, nothing. Let's talk about your team. Will this game, are you watching this game, starting it in effect, will this have any uh, influence on the way you prepare for Yes, it'll hurt us. It'll hurt us. For this reason, it looks pretty easy against Southern Cal, and that is not the truth. I'm sure of that. The other thing, Southern Cal will be itching to play a better ball game than they play today. And uh, I know they're a sportsman, and a sportsman takes the challenge. And so if they don't win this one, they'll be twice as tough against us. They might just be a little bit antagonized, in other words. Yeah, but at the same time, those Buckeyes might be antagonized. And we had a little talk out here uh, about the Heisman Award winner. And I want to say right now, I haven't seen a back on this field yet that comes even close to Arch Griffin. He is the best I've ever seen. He's broken every Big Ten record. He's broken every Ohio State record. He's broken Steve Owens' all-time 100-yard record, and he does it usually in about two and a half quarters, and he's still the best back I have ever, ever seen. Let well, okay, uh, that is Woody Hayes, Ohio State coach, and you know, it's the honesty that you've displayed right there in making that statement to a Southern California audience, Woody, that, I, I mean, proves the integrity of a man like you. I'm proud to hear you say that stick up for what I think is one of the great running backs of all time. Look, at how do you think I've been able to stay in football? <laughs> not, on, not on diplomacy. <laughs> now, that's not a campaign promise. That's a campaign <laughs> was expressed. Now, Woody, we Heck, know, that's easy to say. Listen, we know you enjoy coming out here for the Rose Bowl, and uh, most of us out here are delighted that uh, you're coming back. And uh, just before you leave us here, we, we know you've got to get back, and uh, we thank you very much for, for dropping in. But one thing, was the vote a surprise to you? The uh, vote did go come down almost to the wire about the Big Ten representative. No, was I, it a surprise to you? A year ago, it was to a degree because they've never been sent to sending the team who uh, have been there the most recently. But this time, there was only one way to do it. They had to send the winner. 
we tied, but we beat the other team. We beat the other team. Last year, it was a tie all the way through. And I hope by next year, we can have some mechanics worked out that will keep that from being a Sunday afternoon vote. Because that's like playing the game all over again. Yes, I was going to ask you if you favor some mechanical yes. changes. As a matter of fact, I really would be very happy to take your way of doing it. I think you have an excellent way here in the Pac-8. And even though we won on this thing, I don't think it's a satisfactory way to do it. I think your way that you've already formulated, I think is an excellent way to do it. Well, whether it is right or wrong, there isn't any room for discussion after it is over. I think that is... Well, not, not, not this year there is, because we won it. We beat the team that tied for the title. So, uh, as Bo Schembeck, who was a fine sportsman, said, he said the right team is going. And I think that's just all there is to it. Coach, they want you in television. I Thank you for coming by. You look healthy. I hope your health is great. And we'll see you New Year's Day in the Rose Bowl. Thank you very much. Thank you, Coach Woody Hayes. Our guest is tailback Anthony Davis. And, A.D., no interview should start with you at this stage without saying congratulations on one of the great careers in Trojan history. And I'm sure you're delighted with the way things went. Well, I am, but the main thing that I've been working on is working hard in practice the last three years and, and developing the type of thing with the, the people I've been playing with the last three years. That's the most important thing to me. I'm sure your players, uh, your fellow players appreciate that, particularly because uh, you're one of the few guys who, after it's all over, are going to take uh, the blockers out to dinner. I think that's a great move on your part. Listen, as you went into uh, this season this year, you had... Uh, so many records to look forward to, and most of them now have tumbled. O.J. Simpson's rushing record, the conference scoring record, the NC2A punt return record. Were you looking forward, or were you cognizant of these goals that were available to you? Well, uh, I really don't look at the records that much. The most important thing that I can concentrate on is becoming a team ball player. Now, if I play for my capabilities alone to the rest of my teammates, and the awards and records will take its place. The main thing is uh, going for that Rose Bowl, and that's what we accomplished. Rose Bowl again, and uh, of course a victory uh, over Notre Dame also be kind of nice icing on the cake before going to the Rose Bowl. We too also, you got to understand that is a big traditional rival, and also Notre Dame becoming the alien, knowing that what happened in 72, I think that uh, they won't forget that, and I think that they will be out to stop whatever is going with the Trojan on the field. It's going to be a hard-fought game, but basically when you get in the game, like all it is, it's basically 11 men against 11 men, both defensively and offensively, you know, they're always going to be a dog fight. So I think you just be prepared for it. What about a letdown after clinching the birth of the Rose Bowl and winning the big one over the Bruins? So what about a letdown uh, for the upcoming game with the Irish? I don't think it'll be a basic letdown because, number one, uh, uh, after what happened to us in South Bend, I think we would like to get even, if possible. I think it'll be a hard-fought game on our part, especially going back to South Bend. It is an honor to play in South Bend because, number one, it's been over, known as the number one tradi football you know, uh, tradition in, in, in this country, and I think that we're looking forward to that. What about the Heisman Trophy? Do you give any chance, or any, excuse me, any thought to your chance of winning the Heisman Trophy? You know you're a candidate. I really don't. I mean, I am a candidate, but the thing is, like I said earlier, I'm repeating myself, but the thing is, I really don't know how critics and writers think of my ability, and the thing is, if I play up to what my capabilities are and what the team's capabilities are, I think that uh, with this, it's a, uh, you know, show what my thing is. I only have to do is prove what I have to do on the, on, on the football field. Notre Dame will kick off to USC to start the second half here. And Tom, just a reminder that in 1964, at halftime, the Irish were leading the Trojans 17 to nothing. Trojans won the game 20 to 17. Thank you for the reminder, Bud. I did that football game, and in fact, they made an album out of that. And some of my Trojan friends who from time to time have a wee drop on the far side get it out and play it. And I'll tell you, having been accused of being a partisan broadcaster in 1964, as the game was over, somebody in this booth shouted, we win. I don't, <laughs> but here we are, down 24 to 6. At least SC is, and Notre Dame will kick off. All right, McLaughlin advances on the football. It's been an Irish afternoon as he boots it high and long and deep. In the end zone, Davis coming out at the 10. 15, 20, coming outside at the 30. He's at the 35.
the Trojans right back in this football game without any question. Tom, do you agree? Oh, indeed. I don't know of anything that could have happened that would electrify or get this team fired up more than what just transpired. I'm calling it 100 yards. Uh, if it was farther than that, the NCAA won't allow it anyway. They only list 100 yards return. I'm sure he took it at the goal line or a yard deep. And what a run. That's getting to be old hat with A.D. and Notre Dame. And the Irish couldn't hate it more. And now, we're on the clock for the extra point. The Trojans, trailing 24 to 12. Will they go for two or one? I don't know. Don't wait to see. Lee Mahalo is not in, so they're going to try for two. I don't know what John McKay told him in the dressing room. I don't know whether or not it's going to fire them up to where they can come back and really put some moves on this Notre Dame team, but at least they came out and got six. All right, they're going for two. Aiden takes the snap, rolling, rolling, gets the block, gets another one, and he get in? No. Oh, what a great defensive effort by Drew Mahalik, who has been Mr. Everything for Notre Dame. He got let Hayden just smell the end zone and bumped him out of bounds. About a, half defense. About a half yard short, just knocked him inside the marker. With 24 that... to 12, 14, 46 to go in the third quarter. <laughs> kick off, Lee Mahalo's kick is taken by McLean at the five. He is hit at the 10 and bounced down by Dave Lewis. 6'3", 235 pounds, sophomore from San Diego, who just about tore McLean in two. Irish will have the ball first and 10 at their own eight. That's as good a hit as we have seen all year, Tom. Here come the Irish now. A lot of time left. The whole second half to play. Crowd is really letting Clemens know he's in L.A. He hands off to Paris to the 10 to about the 12. Paris picks up about four straight ahead. It'll be second and six Notre Dame at the 12-yard line. Jeter was there to make the stop. 14-29 remaining in the third period of a 24-12 football game. And the Trojans obviously stung by an inept first half and a tremendously well played first half by Notre Dame and I'm sure a tongue lashing by McKay at the intermission. At least it's short again on a brilliant kickoff return by Davis and Outer trying to stop the alley. Samuels on the reverse carries to the 16 which is going to be very close to the first down but shy by a couple of yards it'll be third and two. Mitchell making the stop. At the 16 Notre Dame with the ball deep in their own territory. And this would be a mighty important down to turn the Irish aside and have them in a kicking situation, if the Trojans can do that. Clements takes him up to the line of scrimmage. Maurice and Pennick, Samuel, the running back. Clements keeping it himself, pitching back. With the ball trying to go outside, he can In there very quickly. Was Eddie Powell the stop was Riley as Powell forced Pennick wide and they drop him back at the 12 and the Trojan stands across the way really fired up. That's inspired defensive football play the fact that we knew all along the Trojans were capable of but had not been demonstrating in the first half. This could make a tremendous difference in this ball game as you can well imagine. We might have a football game on our hands here yet before the day is over. Riley is standing in the end zone to kick for the Irish. Gets the snap. Gets it away. The low spiral coming upfield. Phillips takes it at the 45. Starts back at the 40. And down to the Irish 37. First and 10 Trojans on the Irish 37. Excellent field position. Now we'll see if the Trojan offense with that 33-yard kick and an 8-yard return by Phillips and pick up the enthusiasm generated by the defensive stop of Notre Dame and prior to that, the 100-yard kickoff return by Anthony Davis. And when now, Hayden going over to talk to McKay. When was the last time you saw the Trojan crowd on the far side of the field? This inspired and uh, this worked up. Well, it would have to be either one of these games or a UCLA game, bud, because they just... This Notre Dame SC rivalry and the UCLA SC rivalry is the type that brings out all the gut emotions that uh, this game can produce. At the 37, SC will have excellent field position to do something about a 12-point deficit now. So 
Elks have beat Houston 30 to 14. Got an opportunity to remind you about SC's basketball team, which I thought was a good looking club last night in their home opener and a win. They play Friday and Saturday, Oklahoma State and Utah at the sports arena. Come on out and see them. From the 37 now, Hayden looking over the Notre Dame defense, takes the snap, gives to Davis, cuts back inside, is hit and dropped as he gets to the 36. Maybe not any more than the 37. Uh, we'll wait and see for them to unpile and put him down. Eastman was there to make the stop. They say the 37, and they had the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they're going to give him a gain of a yard, call it second and nine. Bell comes in and Farmer goes out. McKay out of the huddle is wide left. Trojans marching right to left across your radio dial. Second and nine at the Irish, 36 and a half. Digs in motion to the right. Hayden makes the handoff. He's back to throw. Sets up, fires downfield for young McKay. He's got it. He's down at the Irish. Six yard line complete. Dumanetsky was there to make the stop. But a picture pass. Hayden to McKay. And across the way, 80,000 Trojans are on their feet and screaming. Tremendous pass. The uh, type that only Todd Hayden can throw to John McKay. They say that he reads the lump of John McKay as he goes down the field. That's where he knows exactly where it will be. An outstanding pass completion. And boy, oh boy, the Trojans remain on the move. 11.45 remaining in the third period. 24 to 12, Notre Dame. SC a first and goal on the Irish six. Hayden takes the snap to pitch to Davis. Sweeping right at the five. He dives. He's in the end zone. Anthony Davis is caught again. television, that being last Saturday and today. He has done it all already as far as I'm concerned, Tom. Samuel, police in the backfield of Notre Dame. Clemens can't hear for the roar across the way. Police, Samuel, and Pennick, along with Clements, and the Trojan fans across the way with 11.30 to go in the third period, thrilled by this sudden change of events. A 100-yard kickoff return by Davis. A three-play, 38-yard drive. And the Trojans have come back to score 13 points. Now Clements is back to pass. Looking, fires upfield and is tipped away. Almost intercepted by Richard Wood. Pass intended for Demerly. Incomplete. The Batman climbed the ladder on that one. <laughs> they were able to knock it down from his position in the secondary. All right, it'll be second and 10. The ball, they say, on the Irish 23-yard line. 11.26 remaining in the third period. We may be here for some time. Clements looks over the Trojan defense. Second down. He sends Daniel in motion. He's rolling back to his right. Sets the pass. Fires one. It is complete. At the 25, and then driven out of bounds. Penny. They'll mark his forward progress at the 25. Cobb was there to make the hit. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Trojan Radio Network. Picked up two yards at his third and eight. And again, the Trojans will be asked to hold the Irish. Third and eight. Notre Dame on their own 25. Clemens rolling back to throw. Seth fires a pass upfield. Completes the Demerly. He drops it. The Trojans have recovered. SC recovers the fumble. As Demerly is hit. Fumbles the ball on the Irish 25. By C.C. in the down the field. And they wave him off. And the Trojans have it again. Have you ever seen a complexion of a football game change so drastically in such a short period of time? Actually, Bud, four minutes and eight seconds has turned this football game 
spotted Blount into one of the better contests we'll ever see. Win, lose, or draw. The ball is at the Irish 36-yard line, first and 10 coaches. Hayden pitching to Davis on the sweep at the 40, at the 35, to the 33. Going to be a gain of about three yards. It'll be second and seven at the Irish 33. Back, who recovered that fumble on the hit by Demery? Kevin Booth, who has picked up, I think, about six of those loose balls this year now, grabbed that one. Niehaus and Barnett made the stop on Davis trying to sweep. Ball is at the 33, second and seven. Second and seven, SC with the ball in beautiful field position. They trail 24 to 19. Hayden inside the dig, hurdles the line. It's all jammed up in the middle. In there waiting for him as he tried to turn back in was Mike Fanning, number 88. And he stumbled over him and Nash Bush made the stop. So that play never really had a chance to get off the ground, so to speak. 9.52 remaining in the third period. Ball is up to 34. They lost the yard. Big play coming up now. Third and eight, bud. I was just going to say, Kevin Bruce indeed recovered that fumble. You never saw one flop on one more happily, just like Fat Albert. Third and eight. Long third down. Big play. Hayden to pass. Over the middle. It's complete. At the 21-yard line, Sheldon Diggs. First and 10, USC on the Irish 21. Barnett made the stop. This is a football team that Trojan fans have been watching all year, the one they fully expected to play like this. Where they were in the first half, one can only imagine. That is the third pass to Diggs, Hayden to Diggs for 61 yards. 24 to 19. Irish lead, 9.15 to play in the third period. SC first and 10 in the Notre Dame, 21. Hayden the quarterback, has Diggs in motion to the left. Takes the snap. Takes the hand off to Davis, rolling out, and they run, they throw, being chased. Fires downfield for McKay, he's got it at the five, the four-yard line. Oh, when you're right, you're right. When you're right, you're right. 18-yard pass on what has to be a near-busted play. John McKay in the air to make the catch at the four between Harrison and Barnett, who smacked him down. First and goal, Trojan at the Irish four-yard line. The play had been broken. Johnny McKay had fallen down, got up again, went back in, moved out of the crowd to make the catch. Great day in the morning. What a football game. Trojans with an opportunity to go in front for the first time. First and goal. The pitch to Davis. He's at the five. He's in the end zone. Touchdown, USC. temper our enthusiasm by realizing there is all kinds of time left in this game and if Notre Dame ever gets over the shot this may be one of the greatest football games you will ever see you can see all of it we don't know what's yet to come but you will by the time you see the John McKay show tomorrow afternoon and whether it's cheers or whether it's tears if you're a Trojan fan every bit of it will be on the John McKay show channel 7 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon he will have something to talk about for the rest of his life after this one. On the subject of coaches, Eric Carthage and the Notre Dame coach is beside himself on the sidelines. We can almost hear that falsetto voice of his all the way up here. The third quarter has belonged to the Trojans, and now they're going to try and go for two. They lead 25 to 24. Hayden tried a while ago and failed to pitch to Davis. He's going to run it in. He's at the five. He has scored two points. Three and a half minutes of this game yet 
yet to be played, and it's now SC 27, Notre Dame 24. Tom, will you please mail this envelope for me on your way home? It contains my Heisman Trophy vote. Well, a good many of the votes have already been cast and tabulated, you know. Lima Halu kicks off. Off comes to Bobbling Irishman who's up and pick it up and bringing it back to the 22-yard line is McLean. There he is hit by Clay Matthews and Buck. Boy, it's McLean, along with Urich, they both wanted to catch it. For a while there, they were doing an Alphonse and Gaston act that looked a bit precarious. Now the Irish will have it, first and 10 in their own 23. The Trojans have taken a 27-24 lead. This was where Notre Dame was the last time, and SC stopped them, recovering a fumble. Clemens flips over the Trojan defense. Then Samuel in motion. They give us to Bullock, and he hits to about the 25, and Jerry Jeter wraps him up. Bullock, weighing the train, is back in. He went out with a bad ankle in the first quarter when it was uh, 14 to nothing, and then 24 to nothing, Notre Dame. I don't suppose there's any, anything would mend a bad ankle quicker than the turnaround we've had here this afternoon. Right, Pennick comes out. Second down and eight for the Irish on their own 25-yard line. Clemens hands off and Bullock gets to about the 28-yard line. Let me tell you, this game is not for the faint of heart, Bud Tucker. There is some awfully big people hitting one another down there over that inflated uh, pig bladder. It is unbelievable, the punishment they're handing out to one another in the middle of that line. Oh, Tommy Clemens and Urich are in. Tommy Clemens has tried everything. He went to the air and went with his uh, misdirection stuff last time. Now he's been going into the line. Nothing is working. Another big third down play, third and fourth, the 28, coming folding left to pass. Sets up, fires the pass downfield. It is incomplete. Pass was intended for... Demerly, McLean was also down there, incomplete, and the Trojans will force the Irish to kick it once again. Wilbur Charlie Phillips, I believe, got a hand on the ball and deflected it over towards the Trojan bench, and boy, was he mobbed when he got up after falling outside the sideline. All right, Brantley is back to kick for Notre Dame, and Cobb and Phillips are the deep men for the Trojans. Brantley standing on the Irish 15-yard line, 7-19 to play in the third period. 27-24, SC leads, a good spiral, Cobb waiting, takes it at the 25, starts to the far side, looking for a block, he's got top, outside at the 35, 40, 45, 50, at the 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, what a great run, almost all the way. 47 yard mark, 47 yard kick return to the Notre Dame 20 yard line, Sylvester just did bump him out of bounds. Downfield, the Trojan is hurt. Riley is down at the Trojan 30-yard line. The ball is at the Notre Dame 20. Make it the 19 as Marvin Cobb very nearly run it right back down Notre Dame's throat for another six. At the 19, FC will take over first and 10. And Riley, with a knee apparently, I should say a leg injury, not necessarily the knee, he does not seem to be in pain, unless he has a very high tolerance for it, Doctor, because he's showing no big emotion about what they're doing to him on the field. And Dr. Semmel and uh, Jack Ward are there, and they're going to help him up now to we'll get a better idea. So well, he's going to be all right. I, I would hazard that because he's flexing the knee and he's jogging off now. Well, that's good news. Aside from the fact that he's a good football player, he's, uh, he's a fine young man. We'd hate to see anybody get hurt. The Trojans have really spun this game around, Bud Tucker, and now they have a chance to really convince a lot of people. They lead 27-24, and they've got the ball on the Notre Dame 19-yard line. And Marvin Cobb, who may be a better baseball player than football player, just about broke Aaron Parsegian's heart with that run. Not today, he is. No, he is some kind of good football player today. First and 10, SC, the ball is on the Irish 19-yard line. Hayden looks over the Notre Dame defense. FC moving right to left across your radio dial. Hayden hands off to Davis. Straight ahead charge to the 15. And the forward wall of, of SC really moved out 
like uh, SC fans had expected him to do all along. Eastman made the stop, but the forward charge, Davis literally wasn't touched after until he'd gone about three or four yards. SC's line really moved him out. Pick up of uh, nearly five, down to 15. Caught a second and six at the 15. SC with the ball, leading 27-24 over Notre Dame. Third period here at the Coliseum. Lights are on. Hayden looks over the defense. Long count. Long count. There's the snap. He's back to pass. He's rushed. He's hit. He's dropped at the 18-yard line. Making the stop was Greg Collins, co-captain for the Irish. That had to be an audibleizing at the line of scrimmage. He changed the play. And when he changed it, whatever he changed it to, he'd have been better off staying with his original thought because it worked out rather badly, bud. Yes, it did, but I uh, do not think that that will uh, determine the momentum here, Tom. I think that the Trojans really have it. You know, we were saying how strange it is that this season is already coming to a close. Boy, if the Trojans had played this way opening day in Arkansas, there wouldn't be a hog left alive down there. Third and nine at the Trojan 18. Big third down call. Hayden rolling is going to get blindsided. Now firing down in the end zone. John McKay has it. It's a touchdown. Club's annual Ladies' Day luncheon will be held Monday, December the 2nd, 11.30 a.m. at the Coconut Grove, and the event will be honoring John and Corky McKay, the football coaching staff and the seniors from the 1974 varsity and their wives and girlfriends. Tickets will be sold at the door. That's fine. They'll uh, honor John and Corky if they can get them down from Club 9 if this trend continues that we have here right now. Pat Hayden, when he threw the little swing pass to Anthony Davis to close out the first half of the touchdown, from that point on has completed five straight, 86 yards, two touchdowns. He's 10 for 16, one intercepted, 162 yards and two scores. The kick comes at the 10-yard line. Taking it off there is McLean, 15, 20, 25, 30, 32 yard line before he is hit and dropped by Lewis and Steve Kenlin. And the Irish will have good field position now. Notre Dame will take over first and 10 on the Irish 32. FC leads 34 to 24. I may have said 31 24. 34 24. FC leads Notre Dame. All right, first and 10, the Irish. Samuel and Pennick in the backfield, along with Tariq. Samuel in motion, Clement on the delay, gives to Samuel at the 30, 35, he is hit and dropped at the 36. Both the Bradley, Kevin Bruce were waiting for him there. At the bottom of the pile is Richard Woods, the Batman. Forward progress, 37, a pickup of five, second and five. Riley is all right and is back in action. Ball is at the Irish 37, five minutes remain in the third period. 34-24, FC leading. Fennick in motion, the give to Paris, and he bulls his way over the 40. Oh, we'll see where they mark his progress. I think it's going to be close to the 41, and if so, it'll be second down and about a yard, two yards to go. The credit goes to the... Uh, down, I should say. The credit goes to the rejuvenated Trojan defense, of course, but much of the fluidness seems to have gone out of the Notre Dame offense. Do you agree, Tom? Well, we'll, we'll know a lot better after this series, Bob. This will be an important series for Notre Dame. Four and a half minutes. Third down and one for the Irish on their own 41. Trojans lead by 10, 34-24. Clements for Paris. He's got the first down. Well, maybe. Depends on where they mark it. Or 
he was hit, wrapped up very hard by Bruce, but I don't know where they'll mark that football. They did not get the first down. It is fourth and one at the 41. And you're down by 10. Your coach, Eric Parsegian, what are you going to do? I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to go for it. There's no Notre Dame punter come on the field as yet. 3.55 remaining in the third period. What you may want to do is go home, but you can't. All right. Clement comes to the line of scrimmage. Big fourth down play for the Irish. Clement hands off. Police fights his way. I don't know if he got it. It is awfully close. Oh, is it close. If they mark it where I see the linesman standing, he did not make it. But we're going to have to wait and see. I think he may have made it. Richard Wood says, gentlemen, I don't believe he got that far upfield with that football. And they say, Mr. Wood, if you'll stand aside, we'll get on with the proceedings. And the proceedings being the chain gang coming in. And I think Notre Dame has got the first down. Not by much. Just enough is enough. It is first and ten Irish. And the Notre Dame fans, as you hear them roar, really have not gone home. They're right here below us. 342 remaining. This is the first Notre Dame first down in this half. And we played 11 minutes and 18 seconds. At the 43, first and ten for the Irish. Trojans lead 34-24. A third period explosion started off by Anthony Davis's 100-yard kickoff return. Clement back to pass, cutting up a lot of time. He's rushed now, comes out of the pocket at the 40. At the 45, he is hit and bumped out of bounds at the 46. Charlie Phillips ran him out at the 46, a gain of three, maybe four. Danny Reese, not Phillips, over there to knock him out of bounds. See where they mark that ball. 46 is where they're going to put it. Now it's right the first time, 47, a pickup of four, second and six. 3.24 is the time remaining in the third period. SC leading 34-24. Lights are on here at the Coliseum. Getting on towards supper time. We've still got a whole quarter to go. At the 47. Hand off, coming to this side of the plane, and he has bumped out of bounds. Over midfield, down to the Trojan 46. Bumped out of bounds by Cobb. Going to be good for a first down for the Irish at the Trojan, 46. Notre Dame putting a drive together now, and all of a sudden the Irish moving. Of course, we did not expect them to roll over and uh, play dead once they got over the shock of what had happened to them in the early moments of the third quarter. 20th first down for the Irish. They come to the line of scrimmage, the Trojan, 46-yard line, first and 10. Clement, double-wing formation. Urich in motion. He gives to Paris. He gets to about the 44-yard line. Wrapped up there by Eddie Powell, first of all, and then Riley, and uh, also there was Richard Wood. At the 44, going to be a gain of two, second and eight. Not quite the 44. It's going to be second, eight and a half, because it's just nosed over the 45 in Trojan territory. Paris has carried 16 times for 40 yards. Samuel in motion, straight ahead. Paris, and he pulls his way to the 40 and the Trojan 39. Boy, that is real power. They don't try to fool you. They just try to run over you. And sometimes they do it very well. Otha Bradley is down and seems to be uh, writhing about holding his left leg as if it were either a Charlie horse or the wind knocked out of him. Trojans administered to him with 239 remaining in the third period. The ball is on the SC 39. Going to be third and three, Notre Dame with the ball. Trojans leading 34-24. SC has scored 28 points in the third period. Scoreboard doesn't believe it. They're having a tough time getting it up. Scoreboard can't quite believe that SC scored all those. The scoreboard finally convinced itself. Well, I'm sure that if anybody is confused here, it's the little man inside that scoreboard. <laughs> he may be talking to himself. A week ago against UCLA, it quit working. Oka Bradley, I think, more than anything, got his bell rung. And by that I mean he is uh, there's a telephone ringing for Otha. <laughs> to give him the credit, he came off the field under his own power. Dr. Semmel going with him to the bench back of the Trojan reserves. Tim Raines is in now at the middle nose guard spot. Third down three for the Irish. The ball on the Trojan 39. 
We've got two minutes and a half remaining in the third period. Clement gives to Samuel coming back inside, and he has got the first down as he carries to the Trojan 35. Jeter made the stop, but not before Samuel had the first down on the flanker reverse or of a better name at the 35, a pickup of four, first and ten. I started this drive on their own 32. Would you take a ride in the blimp, bud? Yeah, that's the like I'm up there right now. Clements keeps back to pass, sets up, firing downfield. It is cut away. Oh, great defense. Just at the last second by Bush, or we would have had Notre Dame in the end zone with a touchdown. Pass intended for Samuel. And it was just batted away at the last second by Bush. Samuel had gotten behind him, and Clements had lofted it. Samuel coming out now, and in to replace him, McLean. Second and ten, Irish, the ball at the Trojan, 35-yard line. Two minutes remaining in the third period. Panic in motion. Clements back to throw. He's rushed. He fires downfield. Intercepted. Pick off by Phillips at the 30. He's at the 40. 45. Midfield and out of bounds. At midfield. Knocked out by Sylvester. And Charlie Phillips has stepped into the way from Clements once again. 32-yard return on the interception. And the coaches are back in business. that that group was among those spoken to at halftime. Here come the Trojans again. First and 10, SC, the ball at midfield, right at the 50, in motion. Jake to the right, Trojans moving right to left. Pitch back to Davis on the sweep, cuts back in midfield. Dives inside and down to the Irish, 47. Bell to the block that shoved the linebacker wide, let Davis cut back underneath. He goes to the 47-yard line. Not pushed, made the stop along with Eastman. Minute 35 remaining in the third period. Clock running. Second down and six. Pick up a four. The ball is at the Irish. Pick up a three. Second and seven at the 47. Dojans moving right to left across your radio dial, leading by 10, 34-24. In motion, Diggs back to the left side. Hayden, hands off on the delay to Bell. He's at the 40. Stop there. Just at the 40-yard line, hit and stopped by Collins. Linebacker and co-captain for the Irish and close to a first down. One of those misdirection plays. Get the flow going to the left side and then on the slight delay you drop it to the fullback, in this case Bell, who popped straight ahead and nearly had everybody outrun. Short of a first down by inches, it'll be third and less than a foot. The Tupu is in for the first time. The ball is at the Irish 40. 43 seconds remain in the third period. FC leads by 10 and trying to get more. Hayden keeps it. Goes for the first down. He's inside the Irish 40 to the 39 as the clock shows 34 seconds to play. Bud? The most points ever scored by a Trojan team in one quarter goes way back to 1925. They scored 41 against Pomona. So we're going to break that record. We have to step up the pace a trifle here. Only got 33 seconds, and they've scored 28. They'd have to get 13 in a big hurry just to tie. Pomona didn't have much of a club, uh, I guess, that year. Eastman and Nosbush made the stop. It is a first down for the Trojans right at the Irish 40-yard line with 18 seconds to go in the third period. Digs in motion to the right. Hayden, back to pass, sets up. Beautiful protection. Now it breaks down. Now he's running. Down the sidelines and out of bounds. He lost a couple of yards at the 42 as we've got six seconds left. Nosbush ran him out. He was looking for McKay again. McKay and Diggs both downfield and both had company. Oh, you better believe it. The attendance here today, 83,552, and ask me if they have gotten their money to work. Oh, boy. Oh. People don't like this kind of game. They never had peas for dessert. Let me tell you this. That is really living. Ball is at the 42-yard line. It is second down and 12. Last play of the third period. Hayden. Swings it out to Davis at the sideline, and he is knocked out of bounds by Stock, and that series of plays really didn't thrill very many people here as we've got two seconds left. Davis out of bounds at the 45, 
And for the first down at the 40, it is now going to be third down at the 45 and 15 yards to go. Georgians having lost five yards in the last two plays. They lead Notre Dame 34-24. But the ever-dangerous Irish, 10 points is never enough. Two seconds remain in the third period and a big third and 15 play coming up. Davis in motion. Hayden back to pass. Long downfield for John McKay. He's got a touchdown. Touchdown USC as Hayden and McKay do it again. Unbelievable chain of events here in the third period as SC has scored with no time left on the clock a total of 34 points and maybe the 35th in the third period alone. We have told you so many times this year the way Pat Hayden and John McKay work. They say that Pat Hayden reads the seat of his trousers to know exactly where he's going to be. That was another classic example of it. He dropped him right into his arms, hit him right on the numbers, just as he stepped across the goal line. Absolutely an incredible play, and only one in a series of incredible plays and events. We've come to the end of the third period. We're going to have a wait of a bit here for the try for the extra point. It is... Lima Halu adds the extra point, and as Arthur Barker and the Trojan band play contest across the way, and the fourth period is about to get underway, SC leads Notre Dame, 41 to 24. Let's pause. And John McKay has caught four for 112 yards and two touchdowns, all in the third period, and Hayden has gone through the air 207 yards. How many touchdowns in the third period? How many have the Trojans scored? How many touchdowns in the third period? Well, that's what I'm going to have to Because I'm going back to Pomona, where the record is six touchdowns in one period. Oh, and he's 25. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Davis scores is three. The Trojan partisan goes that are down below us, mostly they're Notre Dame people here who are very quiet at the moment. So those over to our right are looking up at the national television booth and chanting, we want Woody. Woody is looking like he is absolutely astounded at what is transpiring here, just as we are. Okay, the Trojans ready to kick off again. Here's an exhausted Tom Kelly. Five touchdowns, but Tucker have been scored. One try for two points, one that failed. Three extra point tries by Lima Halu. 35 points in the third period, and the Trojans lead 41 to 24. Hayden and McKay and Anthony Davis are having a field day in this, their final game as seniors at the Coliseum here in Los Angeles. McLean and Urich are waiting for Lima Halu to kick it off. Oh, there has been some criticism this year about the work of Pat Hayden oh. and uh, John McKay, even a little bit about Anthony Davis. Oh, my golly, have they put it all together and silence the critics here today. All right, Lima Halu's kick is high, end over end, short kick, taken by McLean at the 12, 15, 20. He is hit and rolls to about the 24. Down very quickly with Clay Matthews. He knocked him off his fin, sent him staggering, and, and then he was uh, finished off by Bernie Carver will be on the Irish 23-yard line, first and 10. If you wonder why we're sitting here in almost complete disbelief, and in case you just wandered in off the golf course, SC was trailing 24 to nothing, then 24 to 6, and now they lead 41 to 24. Humble in the backfield. Ball is rolling loose. The Trojans, I think, have recovered. Electrify. 
fine display of college football I have ever seen. Unbelievable. Now this team down 24 to nothing. This team down 24 to 6 has come back and torn Notre Dame apart. Down 24 to nothing with just a few moments remaining in the first half. And now leading with a tremendous throw with 1443 remaining in the football game. It is now 47 to 24. And who knows where it will end? You notice I didn't give the score, Tom. I waited for you to add it up. I wish I had brought my Rockwell computer with me. 47-24, Lima Halo's going to tie for one. The snap, the kick, it's up, it's good. 48-24, to 24, SC leads Notre Dame. We have played but 17 seconds in the fourth quarter. And that's the way it is, sheer bedlam. Well, listen, even the most diehard Trojan fans are beginning to look for a way out. Some of them are headed for the exit. I mean... You almost have to like what happened at the Little Bighorn in order to like what's going on here to Notre Dame in the last half. It's unbelievable. Some are leaving under their own power. Some are being carried out. The roar across the way is literally deafening as it comes cascading up at you from the uh, Trojan bench across the way and, and the student body behind the SC band. Unbelievable. On that last fumble, Pennick dropped the ball twice. You wonder if this great team has lost some of the boys. Lima Halo kicks off. It is a deep kick this time. The McLean at the 2, the 10, 15, the 20. Down he goes. And the Irish head back out of the field, first and 10. Notre Dame at their own 20 yard line, and you've got to believe, seriously, that some of them are saying. I don't know if I want to go back out. Hayden's last three passes, all for touchdowns. McKay, McKay, and Diggs. He has completed seven in a row, four for touchdowns. 233 yards. Maurice and McLean are in the backfield, along with Clement. Going wide at the 20 and being driven out of bounds at about the 24-yard line. I produce a McLean. Our producer Bob Speck has suggested that SC is getting Notre Dame ready for Bear Bryant's Alabama club in their bowl game. I'm sure the Bear is watching this and taking aspirin. Second and six for the Irish on their own 24. SC leads 48 to 24. Clemens rolling back to pass. Fires one complete. The McLean at the 30, 32, rolls up field to about the 34. Going to be the 34 yard line. To the credit of Notre Dame, they show no signs of quitting, although they must be a bitterly disappointed football team. You know, they had truly had in spots of being the national champions, though they have suffered a loss at the hands of Purdue. Who knows, this game is not over yet, although the Trojans lead by 24. What a turnaround we've seen, though. From the 35 first down, Clemens rolling the pass. Chase gets away, fires a pass upfield that is caught at midfield. Boy, he's a magician. Caught by McAfee at midfield and another first down. Boy, he was nearly dropped at the 20 and calm and cool as a thief in the night. Clements fired it upfield and McAfee was there. Caught it in the crowd of Trojans too, I might add. All right, first down Notre Dame at midfield. 13.57 remaining in this football game. Clements. Hands off to McLean, and Jerry Cheetah wraps him up at the 49, a loss of one. So as McLean will say later tonight, there I was, moving along, minding my own business, when some, suddenly somebody tried to take my helmet off my head from the inside. At the 49, loss of one, second and 11. Boy, Jeter seemed to rise right up out of the turf. Clements back to pass. Sets up, fires over the middle, it is intercepted. Picked off by Phillips at the 40, the 30, the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5. Touchdown, USC. It is unbelievable. Oh, Charlie Phillips with the last 10 yards looking right at Tom Clements and holding the football as if to say, you threw it, I caught it, and watch what I'm going to do with it. It was probably 60 yards, I would guess. 65. Charlie.
he started his victory dance about the 15-yard line and was pointing his finger at the last defender saying, don't bother. The snap, the kick, it's good. Would you believe the score here at the Coliseum with 13 minutes remaining in this game is USC 55, Notre Dame 24. The Trojans have scored 49 points in a little over, a little less than 17 minutes. And remember, they didn't have the ball all the time either. At the 5, the 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30 yard line. The return was made by Bergmeier and the tackle Dale Logie. So it's going to be first and 10, Notre Dame. for the Irish on their own 27. They say that's where Burt Meyer's knee went down. Or well, right about the midfield stripe is where Aero Parsegian's heart sunk. 24 to 6. Well, the guys who keep the records and the guys who man the archives will be busy until all hours of tonight. I'm reminded by my statistician that in reality, SC has scored 55 points in the last 17 minutes. Hand off to the 27-yard line. During the ball was Urich. He got nowhere. Do you realize that FC scored with 10 seconds left on the first half clock? In the next 17 minutes, just barely, they scored 55. In that 17 minutes, they scored 55 points. I don't imagine there's any doubt that it is a record against Notre Dame, but what about an NCAA record? What about an all-time mark? And it all started when Davis ran the kickoff back for a touchdown. Clemens to throw. Completes it to McLean. He's up to 30, 32, 34. There he is hit and stopped by Margerian. Now, unless you think that John McKay is taking great relish in this, enjoying it to be sure, he was beaten 51 to nothing in the same field by the same team in 1966. Not the same team, but the same school. He has literally cleared his bench. There are more clean, uniform Trojans on that field now than you could imagine. It is a completely young and brand new defensive unit. Hand off to McLean back underneath, and he gets over the 40 to about the 45. There he is stopped by Nunnally and by Gray. Also there was Cobb. Now we've got Bruce and Wood coming back in as the ball is at the 45-yard line. With 11.58 to go, it is the first down for Notre Dame. The coaches, who ordinarily would be up here in the press box for SC, have come down in the field. Their work is done, they say. First and 10 at the 45, on the sweep, coming back in, diving to midfield and maybe to the Trojan 49. Number 35, Jim Weiler, Dave Lewis, linebacker, substitute, upended him there. They say just shy of the 50, pick up a five, second and five at midfield. This is already a point record for this series, Tom. The high previously was 51 by Notre Dame in 1966. The most the Trojans ever scored against the Irish, 40... 45, 45 in 1972. Hand off to Urich, and he has swarmed under back at the Notre Dame 47. Margerian and Bruce and Nunnally led the attack there, and they swarmed all over Urich, who's a freshman running back. Oh, but I can just see the posters at South Bend next year. Will they have a campaign underway? Oh, oh. I remember going back there one year. They had a coffin with Mike Garrett and Effigy lying in it that they paraded about. Oh. All right, Clemens rolling back to pass. Being rushed, gonna run. He has hit and dropped it midfield. A valiant but unrewarding effort for Tom Clemens. Salado and Bruce were there to make the stop. It is fourth down for the Irish, five yards to go at midfield. Trailing 55 to 24 with 10 minutes. That sounds a little ridiculous, I know, to say that about a Notre Dame team that came into this game nine and one had been rated very high all year long and was leading 24 to six at the intermission. Tony Brantley is back to kick for the Irish. Cobb is deep. We haven't seen Dennis Thurman today, Dr. Francis. Cobb takes it at the 20. Can't find any room and down he goes at the 22. Marvin Cobb did not want five or 10 yards. He wanted to go all the way. He was looking for that avenue up that sidelines. He got himself in trouble doing just that. Good for you, Mark. Andy Rohan was down to make the stop for Notre Dame. Boy, 
the coach and defensive unit gets a hero's welcome every time it goes to the far side of the field. John McKay could literally make a fortune among the nation's college coaches selling his halftime speech of today. Or at least the bullwhip he used on him. Cantwell in motion. Hayden, hands off. Straight ahead, Davis. Over the 25 to the 27. Make it Bell, not Davis. Ricky Bell. To the 27 for a pickup of uh, five, maybe six. Dubinetsky made the stop. It'll be second and four. Notre Dame's worst defeat under Air Force Legion, 40 to six at the hands of Nebraska in 1972. The most points scored against Notre Dame at home was 51. Purdue scored that uh, number in 1960. And the most points scored against Notre Dame away was 59. In 1944, the Army racked it up in a 59 to nothing victory. Going off the field to a hero's welcome, Pat Hayden. FC is called for delay of game. Five yards back to the 22. It'll be second and nine at that point. 9.13 remaining. Lights have been on for quite some time. We're approaching the supper hour. But nobody wants to leave. Uh, they just don't know what's going to happen next. Evans, the quarterback. Pitching back. With it is Carter. Tries to turn the corner at the 20 in camp. He's hit and stopped by Niehaus. Niehaus and Collins were there to make the stop. And Marv Russell. Well, it'll be interesting to see John McKay's show tomorrow and hear him talk about this. I'd like to have a tape of his speech at halftime. Yeah. I would play it for my chickens. Would they lay? Oh, boy. You'd be up to your fetlocks and eggs. At the 22, Dwight Sudden Ford is in. Evans at quarterback. Rolling to his left. Looking upfield. Fires upfield. It is complete. Caught out of bounds by Junior Lee. Good for a first down at the Trojan 35. Collins was there to make the stop. Well, it's good for Evans to get in against the Irish with eight, nine minutes to go. When you consider the nightmare he'll have to face at South Bend next year, the Trojans' number one signal caller. You and I are going to go to South Bend wearing beards and uh, dark glasses and Harpo Marks overcoat. Well, with a name like Kelly, they let me in before they realize why I'm there, see? So I kind of slide by the guards. Well, here you come. At the 35. Evans keeps on the option. Cuts back in. He's at the 40. At the 42. 43. Well, Evans is no um, handful of marshmallows. He's like grabbing a sack full of razor blades. He's got lumps all over him. He can hit you and hurt you. 6'2 and over 200 pounds. He runs it up to the 43 yard line. Lipinski and Harrison make the stop for the Irish. 751. 750 in the clock running. Trojans leading in this ball game. I've almost forgotten the score. It's going to be so huge. 55-24. That's literally unbelievable. At the 44-yard line. SC with a second and two. Evans with the snap. Keeps it himself. He's at the 45. He dives to midfield for a first down. Well, we may be proving a medical or at least scientific point here, Tom. If this does not render Tom Kelly and Bud Tucker speechless, We'll be all right the rest of our day. <laughs> Mahalik and Collins combined on the stop of Evans, who keeps the ball and likes to run. He likes to run with the football, and of course he was a, a single wing um, tailback in his high school days. First down for the Trojans at midfield. Woody Hayes has seen enough to send him to the drawing board for that Rose Bowl game, hasn't he? Oh. Straight ahead. Katupu inside the Notre Dame 40 to the 39, and that may be a first down FC. The Trojans have got Page and Jackson, Smith, Davis, Cordell, Junior Lee, Howell up front. I think they're going to bring the chain gang in, though. They've marked it first down, FC. Say whip inflation now and make your friendly Sears store your Christmas gift headquarters. Sears has some great gift ideas for you. This is the 23rd USC first down and the 7th. They had 7 in the first half. So they've made 16 first downs. Almost as many touchdowns. From the 39, first down, to give us to Tarver, going outside, at the 40, he's down. Dropped for a loss of one. Bernie Tarver, who's the best 
Well, you better be careful about this. I was going to say the best Trojan prospect to come out of Bakersfield since Frank Gifford. I don't know if there's been another great one since Gifford from Bakersfield, has it? Dr. Bob? No, I would have to give uh, Bakersfield. That's a nod for Bakersfield. All right. Dubinetsky made the stop for Notre Dame. Tarver dropped at the 40. Loss of a yard. It's going to be second and 11. Six minutes remaining in the game. 55 to 24. SC leads Notre Dame. Whoa, Dwight Ford was bumped at the line of scrimmage but got a yard nonetheless. The Goodyear blimp started home at halftime. They sent him a radio message, said get back here. You know, it's interesting to glance occasionally at the sidelines and watch Coach McKay walking up and down. I think might almost be oblivious, really, he isn't to the score, but he continues to coach. Turns and says something on almost every play to one of the players standing behind him. As if to call his attention to this or to that. All right, going to be third down and ten. Trojans at the Irish 39. Evans rolling out to his right. May throw does. Fires a pass complete. Junior Lee. Gets it and goes out of bounds at the Notre Dame 23-yard line. Junior Lee is just a junior. If you're wondering about who's going to fill in for John McKay, the glue-fingered uh, split end, it'll be Junior Lee from Long Beach Poly. And then there's Ryan. Randy Simmerin, who's just a freshman from Burbank, and as I speak of him, he comes into the ball game. Lipinski made the stop, but the Irish 23, 520, clock stops left in this game. Trojans lead 55 to 24, 35 points in the third quarter. In motion, Cantwell. Rolling to his left is Evans being chased. Gets away, gonna run with it, he won't get away. Drops it about the 29. Going to be a loss of at least six yards. Marv Russell, sophomore middle linebacker for the Irish, came rolling in. Did I see a flag back there at the 35? Yes, you do, right? Probably the 35 yard line. Probably uh, clipping, and the Trojans were trying to give uh, Evans some running room. It's going to be a 15 yard walk off. From the 35 to midfield. Dave Dyer is here. He came into the booth before the game and said he had a dream. Not one, but two. I don't think I have to preface these remarks by saying that Dave Dyer is a Trojan fan. His father, Braven, had never let him even come to the Christmas party again if he were not. Or his brother, Buddy. What's he doing having two dreams? He go to bed twice? I don't know. I guess he spent the whole week there thinking about this game. He said the Trojans won in both dreams. Evans is back on the delay. Gives to Ford, and he gets to the midfield stripe, and then the 49, no more. Stop was made by Greg Collins and uh, Stock. Under five minutes remaining in the game. It's going to be at the Irish 49-yard line. It'll be third down for the Trojans and 36 yards to go. Well, when good fellows get together to talk about past college football games, I dare say this one may get a mention, Tom. Rob Adolph from Dinuba, baseball player who's been a valuable Trojan throughout his career, though he's not played much of football. Good baseball player is in. He's back to pass, looking. Fires over the middle. It is, oh, just about complete right off the shoe tops. Pass was intended for John Cantwell. Incomplete. You know that Rob Adolph, there are more people, or were more people, maybe 15 times over, bud, sitting here watching his team play today than are in Dinuba. Yes, I may go along with that. Dinuba is a nice but small community up there, but they're very wealthy up there because I believe they grow sugar beets. That would have a tendency to do it. Ben Sevens is back in with 4.14 to play in the game. Trojans lead 55-24. Evans and quarterback. At the Irish, 49. The pitch to Carter. The kid to Diggs on a reverse. He's at the 45 to the 43-yard line. The 42. A long way from a first down. Dubinetsky made the stop for Notre Dame. Where have all the fighting Irish gone to? Dubinetsky, Novikov, Mahalik, Zappala, Niehaus, Nasbush, Mashmeyer. Lopinski, where have the Fighting Irish gone to? Well, it is a forlorn crowd of white jerseyed Irish standing along the sidelines now in comparison to that first half when they were jumping up and down and waving their arms. With three and a half minutes to go, the Trojans will kick. Lucas puts the foot into it and gets a high spiral downfield taken at the seven-yard line. The 10, 
and no more. Buried under an avalanche of the Cardinal and Gold. The Irish receiver, Harrison, is dropped just shy of the 10-yard line. 35-yard kick, two-yard return. 55 points have been scored by the Trojans today. Three and a half minutes remaining. We'll be back. Frank Alaco is in at quarterback now, and he takes it and goes for a yard to the 10. That's power line. Frank Alaco, a senior, is in. He hands off to Russ Kornman, who's over the 15, up to about the 17-yard line before Hogan is there to hit him and knock him down. And also in on the tackle for the Trojans is Kenny Gray. Two minutes and 40 seconds and the clock running. USC football coming to you from Los Angeles and it's brought to you. Russ Kornman is in along with Paris in the Irish backfield. Alaco is the quarterback. Clemens no longer in. The give is to McLean and he gets to the 17-yard line and no more. Argerian makes the stop, bottom of the pile. We've got a Trojan down there and uh, wearing jersey number two, and I have no idea who he is, nor does anybody in the press box. Right? The coaching staff has gone downstairs, so they'd be the only people that could tell us. It is fourth down with a yard to go for the Irish, and they're back in punt formation. And Furman, Dennis Furman, freshman speedster, who has alternated a flanker and at safety, is back to receive the kick, and it's a good kick. Furman takes it at the 45, and the Trojans back to midfield. 45 at the 40 and drops at the Irish 37 yard line. May have fumbled, he did, and I think Notre Dame recovered. Yes, Thurman fumbled and the Irish recovered. And number 43 for Notre Dame comes up with the football. That's Doug Becker, linebacker. 37 yard kick and 18 yard return and Thurman fumbled and the Irish take over. Minute and a half to play. 55 24, the Trojans lead. Come out of the field. Alaco rolling out on the quarterback keep is over the 35, the 40, and up to the Irish 42. Number two out there for the Trojans, we believe, is uh, Mike Carey, a reserve quarterback. Someone suggested it might be it might be Ricky McKay, who's busy playing for Bishop Vermont. If he was here, he'd been in this game. I can see you. Players of the game offensively. Star Anthony Davis, defensively, Charlie Phillips. The pitch is to McLean. He laterals back to Alaco, who drops it, and the Trojans are going to recover at the Irish 39. SC recovers at the Irish 39. I don't know why, what Notre Dame was trying to do. McLean had the ball, was sweeping right. Was out in front of Alaco, his quarterback, who was trailing him. He was about five yards up there, quickly turned and said, here, you take it. I don't want it. And Logie picked up the loose ball. Take a moment to thank our broadcast crew today and for the entire year. Dr. Bob Francis and Terry Nims have done the spotting. The world's best stat man, Jay Berman, engineer director here at the Coliseum, Tom Goodwin. Give you the rest in just a moment. From the Irish 39, Trojans for the first time, leading 55-24. Evans, the quarterback. Make it eight off the quarterback. Hands off the court. Outside at the 35, the 30. Thrown out of bounds at the Notre Dame 27 yard line. White cut the court. Driven out. At the Notre Dame 27 by Harris. that according to the all-time records that we have of Notre Dame, the most points scored against them in, of all time was 59. So there's an opportunity here to break that one. Indeed. Our studio engineers, Marshall Friedman, Neil Smith, and George Walton. SC football produced by Bob Speck and is an exclusive feature of the Bob Speck Sports Company. Gentlemen, it's been a great season. Thank you very much for your invaluable help and assistance. Adolf pitching back. Homer with the ball at the 25, the 20, the 15, out of bounds. A freshman back, 195 pounder, six footer, on the pitch, sweeping left, driven out by Harrison, stopping the clock with 32 seconds. And the ball is at the Notre Dame 15. And of course, to you, Bud Tucker, thanks. It has been a great football season, one that has gone by, unfortunately, much too fast. And I said it last week, and I might as well say it again. John McKay would love to play Cal tomorrow and Arkansas on Monday. Why not both tomorrow? <laughs> off the quarterback as Canwell in motion pitching back Rod Connors dives to the 12 yard line Rod Connors who is quite a sprint dash man hurdles man down to the 12 20 seconds somebody stopped the clock yes USC has called timeout 20 
seconds remain in this football game, and the Trojans are at the Irish 13-yard line. Don't forget, John McKay will be smiling, laughing, and picking tomorrow at 5 o'clock on Channel 7 when the John McKay Show shows you all of these highlights. Tony Gibson is in. Young running back from Long Beach. Pitch is back. Gibson got to the line of scrimmage, no farther. The gun has sounded the end of this contest here at the Coliseum. Unbelievable game. We'll try to recap this one for you in greater detail. Check the scores of the games played on the post-game show. Final game of the season and the score. UFC 55, Notre Dame 24. Tom Kelly from Untucker inviting you to stay tuned for Coach's Football Wrap-Up. Next on the Coach's Radio Network. football fans, Tom Kelly with Bud Tucker, welcome to the Trojan post-game wrap-up show. Across the way, resounding roars, one by one, the seniors of John McKay's 1974 Trojan football team being introduced. I've got to believe, Bud, that last roar might have been for Anthony Davis, I don't know. Anthony, was it big? Richard Wood, all right. John McKay. Now probably one for Anthony Davis. There he is. They'll bring the joint down. They're about to tear the Coliseum down. 83,552 fans got in on one of the wildest, most exciting, most unbelievable notion at SC Notre Dame football game you would ever expect to see anywhere at any time. The coach is winning it. 55 to 24, and they score 35 points in the third period after coming out at the end of the first half down 24 to 6. The first half was all Notre Dame. Bullock a two yards run to make it 7 nothing after they had intercepted Hayden on the Trojan 39. Summit to Demily, 30 yards, 14 to nothing. SC was fourth down and a yard to go on their own 30, and they failed to get it. And Demily made a touchdown on the next play, 14 nothing. They then, the Irish, went 80 yards and 16 plays for a field goal, 17 nothing. Then they went 79 yards, eight plays, an eight yard run by McLean, 24 to nothing. And with less than a minute to go, in fact, just 10 seconds left on the clock, Hayden finally flipped a little swing out pass to Davis. And with the extra point try blocked, and why not? Because that's the kind of a first half it had been. The Trojans went to the dressing room down 24 to 6. Well, brother, you've never seen a thing like the third period. 35 points, starting with Davis, running the opening kickoff back 100 yards. And then Davis again. Three plays, 38 yards, the Trojans scoring to make it 24 to 19, with only about three and a half minutes gone in the third quarter. Then Bruce recovers a Notre Dame fumble, and Davis scores again a seven-yard run, and the Trojans go for two points, and they make it. 27-24 SC, but in no way were they through. In two plays later, three plays, the Trojans scoring, Hayden to McKay, a 30, uh, an 18-yard touchdown pass, making it 34-24. Phillips intercepts Clements, and Hayden passes to McKay, 45 yards this time, to make it 41-24 at the end of three periods. Then Bruce recovers a fumble on the Notre Dame 15, and in the fourth quarter now, Hayden throws to Diggs 15 yards, and it's 48-24. In the meantime, the Irish can do nothing. And then to cap it off, Clements back to pass in desperation with a little over 13 minutes left in the game. Phillips intercepts and runs it 65 yards right down Clements' throat to make it 55-24. Has to be one of the all-time thrilling Trojan wins over their arch-rival Notre Dame. Bud Tucker has got the stats and we'll cover that for you, but first this word, Bud Tucker and... He's got the statistical report on the game with the Trojans winning at 55-24. Bud, have you ever been that excited about a football game before? I would honestly have to say without any uh, reservation whatsoever, Tom, that this was the most exciting, incredible football game that I've uh, ever witnessed, and that goes uh, back 20 years of watching college and professional football. This one had it all, and I would have to say that the 118th victory of John McKay's great career here at the University of Southern California, I think that it would have to be the most gratifying of those 118 as well. Okay, uh, let's get into the statistics, Tom, while I still have some voice left. Now let's uh, take the Trojans. 
405 total yards. That's against 364 for Notre Dame. Okay, in rushing, Anthony Davis carried 18 times for 47 yards and two touchdowns. Pat Hayden, 10 times for six yards. Bell, three times for 24. Farmer, two for six yards. Carter carried twice and gained two yards. Sheldon Diggs carried twice for five. Evans carried twice for 13 yards. Mosey Tutupo carried once and gained 11 yards. Tarver once and he lost a yard. Ford three times for 15 yards. Homer once for 13. Connors once for two yards. Gibson once and he lost a yard. In the passing department, Pat Hayden, 12 for 18, had one intercepted. Evans, two for two. Adolph attempted uh, one, completed none. 233 yards passing for Pat Hayden, 29 for Vince Evans. And Pat Hayden, of course, threw for a tremendous four touchdowns. Receiving for the Trojans, Davis caught four for 37 yards and one touchdown. And, of course, Anthony's fourth touchdown coming on his kickoff return to start the second incredible half of this football game. Sheldon Diggs caught four for 76 yards and one touchdown. John McKay, four for 112 yards and two touchdowns in a tremendous farewell to regular season play for the coach's son, John McKay. Junior Lee caught two for 29 yards. Very quickly, individual statistics for Notre Dame. Bullock carried 10 times for 40 yards and one touchdown. He left the game early with an ankle injury. However, he did return. Clement, seven carries for eight yards. Penny, three for eight yards. Samuel carried five times for 25 yards. Perry, 16 times for 40 yards. Jury three times for nine. Goodman once for 14. McLean, seven times for 25 yards and one touchdown. Weller once for five yards. Alaco twice for six yards. Kornman once for six yards. Passing, Clements did all the passing. 14 of 20 with two intercepted, one touchdown and 178 yards. Receiving for Notre Dame, Samuel. Caught one for nine yards, Goodman two for 35, Demerly two for 39 and one touchdown, McCray five for 59 yards, McLean three for 31 yards, and Pennick one for two yards. The total yardage once again for the Trojans, 405, and uh, for Notre Dame, 364. That is the statistical picture, the score of 55 to 24, but no figures, no figures at all can tell of the tremendous drama that we saw here today and I guess Tom a fitting way to end a great season as you mentioned earlier it seems incredible that 11 games in 12 weeks have gone by this quickly and I think that uh, that will do it for me here today except for me to tell you Tom Kelly that uh, there just wouldn't be any words for me to describe what a great pleasure it has been to work with you and to thank you so much for all the help and assistance and encouragement you've given a rookie and uh, the producers and God willing we'll see you right here at the old home stand September the 12th 1975 USC at home to Duke <laughs> thank you very much Keith Jackson the able voice of ABC Sports come in here for a second Keith you've seen a thousand football games speaking to that one right there and tell me if in your memory and we can think back only in here to maybe the 63 Rose Bowl uh, 42-37 for hectic last second touchdowns uh, of coming back and forth I, I can't remember a game like this never seen anything like it I think that's a good example to choose that Ben kill in Wisconsin team against yes. the Trojans was an incredible thing but uh, 35 points in a quarter is a record against Notre Dame nobody's ever done it now tell us what our good friend Woody Hayes did I trust he went out there healthy the man uh, was in here and and uh, a great visit I know you wanted him back on television and he wouldn't leave our microphone and then in the second half I thought maybe he was going to have an attack he just couldn't quite believe what he saw well he took a lot of notes and I I'm sure that uh, his mind's going to be grinding on the way home. He's going back to Columbus tonight. He's taking a red eye home, and he's going right to work on it because he had, he had said, you know, though, Tom, before the ball game, and of course, but with his book, you win with people, and he yeah. kept talking about the people that Southern California had that if they ever eliminated mistakes, they would kill somebody. Yeah. And here they come on the second half today, don't make any mistakes. And I don't know what all the talk has been all year. This is actually the first time I've seen SC play, and uh, I've been reading and hearing all this talk about uh, the lack of a passing attack, but I've never seen Pat Hayden look any better than he did today. But it's also worth noting, I think, that in that one play, the big, big play that uh, where McKay went in between the two uh, deep men, uh, he went in between two freshmen. 
and got away from him. So, uh, yes, if Notre Dame was suspect, it had to be in the deep secondary. Yep. And Hayden's ability to throw the ball, even after being intercepted the first time he goes back to throw, and coming back and throwing it that well really is what spelled defeat for the Irish. A young team in the defensive secondary, awfully big and talented team. It was a great football game, and, and it just snowballed out of sight. And, of course, in the late stages, trying to play catch-up by Clements was fair game, and, and Phillips picked him off and ran at 65 yards. Well, there's no definition for uh, the swing of human emotion. Every contest is played in surges. We saw a perfect example of it here today. Well, I, I tell you right now, that Southern California outfit, it, when they want to, there's something. They kind of walked out of here, I thought, to start the ball game and uh, put the helmets on with a loose chin strap, but certainly not in the second half. We were thinking we'd all love to have a copy of McKay's halftime oration, <laughs> <laughs> Keith Jackson, because we could make a fortune uh, just settling it about the college. Nice to see you, Thank you, Keith. Good seeing you.